Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio. This is one of your hosts, Tyson Roush, and another jam-packed show for everybody. We hope everybody's safe. We hope everybody is social distancing. We hope everybody is healthy. And this show will give you a chance to get a little escape from the world of chaos that we're living in right now. So let me introduce the man of the people, Long Beach Joe. What's up, man? What's going on, Ty? Yeah, you know, I hope everyone's safe and healthy and happy out there. I hope everybody's families are doing well as well. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, things are getting crazy out there, but I hope everybody's good. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I myself, I can't wait to talk about this team and what we got going on, moves that have been made, and, you know, just where, where people are at with the roster, how they feel. So, listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page. Our content's up there. Go ahead and give us a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. So, without further ado, Ty, let's go ahead and get into the show, man. I'm fired up. Yeah, as always, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Talk Jets Radio. Check us out on YouTube. Joe, Joe returned to the YouTube channel. He made a big debut. His videos get all kinds of views. So check us out. Let's Talk Jets. Let's Talk Jets on YouTube. He, he made all his fans very happy. So he's back there, oh, and uh, we're on, we're on Breaker no Soundcloud. <laughs> you got your big following, no man. Fans. Everybody's excited to see you, I man. I got nothing. I, I don't have no fans. I have supporters. And I want to thank everybody for supporting me. I support you folks as well. I will, like I said, you know, the videos are coming. I've been extremely busy. Everyone knows, you know, I'm a professional, so I got to do what I got to do. But I'll keep them rolling. You know what I'm saying? Just been having to do a lot of stuff. So we're on Google Play, Spreaker. Obviously, we're live on Tuesday nights on Blog Talk. And before we kick things off, um, a little side note of something I'm doing. Um, as everybody knows, we're going through some real crazy times, and one of the, one of the um, organizations we always support is the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. So what I'm doing is I'm raffling off one of the helmets I have. It's a helmet signed by Jamal Adams and Marcus May. It's a mini helmet. Uh, Marcus May signed in green. Jamal Adams signed in silver. It's a mini helmet. It's $10 to enter. It's only 100 entries. I've sold about 70 of them right now, so you still have 30 opportunities to go. Um, it's $10 a piece, and all the money is going to the food bank. So... Ten dollars, a hundred entries is a thousand dollars. It'll go five hundred dollars to the community food bank of New Jersey. The other five hundred dollars will go to Fulfill New Jersey, which is a food bank in the two counties where I live in, which are right now in New Jersey are just being our our county is just suffering some severe circumstances with the coronavirus. So as everybody knows, New Jersey and New York is just it's a very, very difficult time here. So I'm trying to raffle off the helmets. So if anybody wants to do this, just contact me on Twitter or Instagram. Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, whatever. I will provide transparency with everything, receipts. All the money donated is going right to the food banks. So if you guys can help out there, I'm sure if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen it. But that's what we're doing, and I uh, hope everybody is staying safe. So, Joe, I guess we could start. We, the Jets had some big news today, man. They had breaking news okay. with this team. <laughs> and what they did was they signed their backup quarterback. And this is great, man. I'm thinking, you know what? We've got some money to spend. We're going to get a veteran quarterback to back up Sam Darnold, who's, who's been banged up, you know, first couple of years. It's a little nicked up here and there. Mm-hmm. David Fails, man. Brett Back knows the system. Yeah. We got our guy, dude. Yeah. One year, this is what it's all about. Knows the system. And Adam Gase guy, we are playing some ball right now. Yeah, well, you know, look. <laughs> Listen, Gaze love Fails. We all know that. Um, you know, he's being brought back here. I know a lot of people were looking into this and were saying, hey, you know, there, were, there was a lot of names that people wanted to see, you know, possibly brought back here, you know, being brought in here as a backup for Sam. Um, but if, Gay, if Adam Gates feels comfortable with him and this is his guy he wants to go with, hey, it is what it is. He's in control of this offense, so, you know, he's making his calls. But, listen, there's no excuses, <laughs> okay? There's no excuses. When, when you have – if Sam does miss time and you have to put this guy in the game, he better be ready to go. Because I'm tired of hearing about how this guy knows the system, he's good to go, everything's understanding. When he goes out there and he craps the bed, then it's excuses. Oh, well, you had to deal with fails. Oh, no, no, no excuses. You had time. There are quality backups out there still kind of roaming around. Matt Moore's still out there. I'm saying, but you still, you chose at this point to go with fails, so it is what it is. 
You know, and the, the weird thing is, and this is, it's a very weird stage we're in right now with Jets fans. It's strange because everybody likes to call me a troll and negative because everybody all of a sudden, <laughs> everything that Joe Douglas does, everything he does is perfect. Joe Douglas can do no wrong right now. Keep in mind, he did things wrong last year. Throughout the season when he was actually managing the roster and the team, he made mistakes, which I guess we're going we're gonna to ignore all those. We're not going to acknowledge those. And now everything he's done this offseason is perfect. Like, Joe, I don't understand. Like, how, like we are bargain based shopping everywhere. We're on the clearance rack for every position, which he's getting heralded for, which it sounds great now. Oh, we're going to have cap space for next year. In 2021, we're going to do this and all these great things. All he's really doing right now this year is cleaning out the contracts he don't want, cleaning out the players he don't want, bringing in stop gaps, stop gaps and Band-Aids and journeymen, hold the fort guys for next year when he's going to spend $100 million and hopefully draft well. And to yeah. me, it's like, I, I get it. If that's the approach you want to take, it's fine. But basic common sense stuff is you want a backup quarterback that can fill in and play well. David Fales didn't play last year. He's never really played at all in his career. So... When I, I make a comment saying, oh, this is kind of weird. Why don't we go after Matt Moore? Why don't we get a proven guy that actually has starter reps, like played like a season in the NFL, that actually played? And everybody's mm-hmm. making excuses for Joe Douglas. Well, it's the practice time. Well, it's this. Well, it's a... Dude, like something just makes sense here, Joe. Like a backup quarterback that can actually play in the NFL is a, is a good thing to have. Like this is, I mean, like, this, I'm not being a negative fan. Yeah. It's just like, it's like, and yes, they can still do this down the line. But like I said, Matt Moore is still there. A whole bunch of other guys have already been signed that we didn't want. Like it's just oh. damn. Like this, this we're we're in the dollar store for everybody, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, ain't nothing wrong with the dollar store, right? Let me tell you some ninety nine cent store, Dollar Tree, some of my favorite places. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I, I enjoy getting up and down those aisles and seeing what deals can be had. But when you talking about the Jets here. You know, you looking at the situation, like you said, there's still some guys out there. That's why I'm not necessarily, like, going crazy because, again, there's still guys out there that, that Joe Douglas could target. But if they just begin and end with sales and that's it, that's the guy that's going to be backing up, I'll, I'm going to be a little bit worried um, because, again, this is a guy, like you said, hasn't really been all that great. And you're hoping that, uh, of course, we all hope that Sam doesn't miss time this year, but if he does – you want to make sure you have a guy that can come in there that is you've seen have quality starts elsewhere. We've seen Matt Moore, you know, put together some quality starts other places and be able to continue forward and win his games. Because, again, you look around the NFL, there's teams. We talked about the Eagles. Listen, when their starting guy went down, they plugged in their backups at multiple positions and said, hey, we're not going to stop chugging. You know, the NFL don't stop. They don't go, oh, you got a bunch of guys injured this week. Okay, well, we'll take it easy on you. We'll take it light. No. Especially when you look at the schedule that we have, and I was talking about that at the end of last season. You look at the schedule we got coming up, there's a lot of teams that's ready to go. They don't care. And if, if Sam is missing time, they're still going to bring everything in the kitchen sink, and you have to be prepared for that. You have to have a guy out there that's going to be able to beat these defenses, not just with his mind, but with his arm as well. So it is, what, like I said, it is what it is. <laughs> if they stop and Sales is the only guy that's brought in, you know, this is this is Adam Gaze's offense. These are the guys he wanted. This is his system guy that knows everything. You got to go out there and perform. Yeah, like I said, like he's taking a lot of calculated risk here with these, you know, lower level guys and and these very you know mm-hmm. frugal contracts. But certain positions you just can't cheat. And I guess mm-hmm. listen, he can make a move down the line and get somebody. But and this is and to clarify what I'm doing here is. I can't, I can't comment on the future. I'm commenting on what happened today. Like Everybody's like, oh, well, you know, in July this could happen. I'm saying as of right now, who we sign and who we have, as opposed to who other teams are signed, it's just like, all right, this is, you know, and then the next thing is, oh, we'll just draft the quarterback. All right, so now we're drafting the quarterback. <laughs> so now you want us to, it's like, dude, that's like everybody's little, that's everybody's little defense button. When in doubt, say draft. <laughs> then we have 45 draft picks. So now we're going to draft pass rushers, corners, receivers, running backs, offensive linemen, outside linebackers. We're going to go all on a quarterback too, Joe. Let's just go for it all. Why even have free agency? We're just going to draft everybody. <laughs> what is going on here? I gotta, what what I happened? Well, you know, look, uh, and I will say this. <laughs> With the draft coming up, like you said, the way we mark in base shop, Joe Douglas has put a lot of emphasis on his drafts. He's got a hit on a lot of these picks. 
He's got to get guys that are going to come in and give us production, you know, not just year one, but, you know, the, uh, not just, excuse me, in the first round, but in some of these other rounds as well, especially in these mid-rounds. He's got to find guys that are going to come in and be able to produce. I mean, we got a lot of holes. <laughs> There's a lot of issues here. And I'm just hoping he can solve them, man. But, you know, with the bargain basement shopping, the way he set it up, maybe he changes up the strategy next year. That's what I'm hoping, um, especially with That's the more cap room that we'll have. That's what I'm hoping, um, that, you know, he'll open up next year and really be ready for business and really, you know, go out there and attack some of these free agents in much-needed positions that we have. Uh, but, man, like you said, we've definitely bargained basement shop. Yeah, this, to me, this is pretty transparent what they're doing. They're doing everything this year with an eye on next year. Like, th that's it. Like, Joe, let's be honest. They're going to have $100 million in cash space next year. Man. The same amount of holes we have this year. But the same amount of holes we have this year because all the one-year contracts you just gave out are going to be all up next year. So you have the same holes but a ton more cap space. And, and that's what they're yeah. doing. And, and the whole build through the draft makes sense. But to just say, in, in theory, he drafts three guys this year that are solid contributors. Three out of, we'll say three and a half. Okay. So next year you have three more players that can build your system. You're going to lose, what, Henry Anderson. You'll probably lose Le'Veon. You're going to lose a lot more players. So you're, they're basically yeah. not, they're, you know, trying to build through the draft. You know how they're going to build this team? Through $100 million in cap space next year. That's what they're going to do. Like, this year, like, oh, to me, I keep saying it, it's like a wash year, dude. Like, I just don't see, like, they're not being aggressive enough to bring in big prime talent, like game-breaking talent. It's like all hold the fort guys. The like, kind of guys, like, you know what? If we get a diamond in a rough, great. If he, if he overperforms his contract or outplays his contract, awesome. But you know what I mean? Like, if Jordan Jenkins plays great, will he come back? He's going to test the market again. Brian Poole, like, all these guys. It's like they're banking on next year. So it's like now it's just like yeah. we got to see if we can hold it together this year, try to be competitive with all these you know, guys on one-year contracts or be playing their asses off because they want to get that new contract. Okay, fine. But then you have – then it, the thing is, and the, the biggest argument I hear is, well, they upgraded the offensive line. Do we really know that? <laughs> like, how, like how does everybody know this? Like, and it's not being negative, dude, but I just – like, people making me go clear is like, what did I miss? <laughs> that all of a sudden all, all the offensive line problems are fixed. The wide receiver problems oh. are fixed. Like, all our problems are fixed. We only have Le'Veon Bell. We don't have running backs. We only have Le'Veon Bell. Like, <laughs> like, what am I missing here, dude? Like, well, there's so much that needs to no, happen here. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I've said this, uh, you know, when we were kind of making our signings along the, the offensive line, I think a lot of people think different names equals improvement, and that's not necessarily true. There's just different names. I remember when we brought in Spencer Long, everybody's like, oh, we've improved, and that guy was horrific. Um, you know, you bring in guys like Fant, who, if you look at his his tape and his past, is he really an upgrade over Beecham? Uh, a lot of us don't think so, and you know, all, everyone knows how I felt about Kelvin Beecham. There's various other holes, of course. Guys like Connor McGovern, who we thought, hey, we've seen, and like, yeah, that that's definitely an upgrade over what we had. But all the other spots, and especially with some of the guys that even he brought back, like I, I know everyone's loving Alex Lewis, but he was on that horrific line that was getting beat by three man fronts. He was there. <laughs> that was one of the guys that was getting beat, you know, at times. Uh, and especially when you look at our right tackle spot, if that ends up starting. You know, Chuma starting there, we saw Chuma struggle. We all talked about how Chuma, you know, is a is a maybe two, three years away from really being a solid, you know, decent starting tackle before, you know, so who knows what we're going to get when we put him in there next year, so if he's even the starter. So, you know, there's a lot of questions there still along the offensive line, but, again, there's also a trade that could be made. Maybe Joe Douglas was cooking up that trade for Trent Williams. I'm hoping that he does that. Because then if you bring in a, a guy like that, vastly improves your offensive line. That vastly improves your outlook on your offense as well because you know you've got a solidified guy there, a solidified franchise guy at that left tackle position. You know you've got a building block in place now. Of course, you still have to worry about right tackle because I don't even think that Fant is a solid starting right tackle in this league. I don't think anybody that we have on the roster is as yet as of yet. But, you know, at least you have that cause there. At least you have, okay, you've got solid center play. You've got a solid left tackle there. You're going to be okay. So, you know, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Joe Douglas is still going to be working and moving. That's why I said I'm not jumping off the bandwagon. I'm not saying fire him. 
you know, I, I've understood some of the moves that he's been trying to make, but like you said, especially when you look at a lot of the one-year deals, these are holes you're going to have to fill. Uh, Brian, bringing Byron Poole back, even, you know, Pierre Desir, all these guys, it's great moves. Those are one-year deals. Neville Hewitt, uh, Jordan Jenkins, like you said, so you're going in the next year. Yes, you have cap space. Yes, we'll have another draft, but you're going to have to, again, fill outside linebacker, cornerback again, you know, at various spots. You're going to be looking at all these different spots, and you still, as of yet, don't have a pass rusher. You still don't have all these other stuff. So now you're going to have to use all that cap space to try to fill these positions, you know, via free agency, which is going to be quite a pain. We see that in the past. And then you're going to have to continue to draft to fill those positions as well. So I'm looking to see what he does, man, because there's still a lot of you know holes and issues with the team. But, again, I keep telling people everybody's okay with what's going on. He's building the right way and just, you know, slow stroll it. Everything's good. Listen, it's going to be time to pay Sam in a second, dude. I'm telling you, I'm going to keep telling you all that. Sam's time is coming, and it's coming soon. You can blow away this year. That's another year off that contract. You blow away next year. You try to put a team together so fast. You're going to have a year before it's time to pay this dude. It's time to pay him. And when it's time to pay him, because we've never had that issue here with this football team, we've never really had a franchise quarterback in, in recent history, a franchise quarterback to really take up 30% of your cap, almost 40% of your cap. We haven't had that. Go talk to these other teams around the league that have had that. You know, your Green Bay Packers, even with the Seahawks, the way they had to kind of change things around, you know, when things were changed. Hell, go, go talk to the Rams right now. Golf contract? Oh, yeah. It's changing things around there. They have to get rid of Todd Gurley. They're, they're moving other guys around, too. And so let me tell you something. That's going to put a hefty load on our cap. And then when things get strapped, it's going to be even harder to build this football team. We've seen that around the league as well. So, I don't know what's going to happen, but, man, we've got to get it figured out because if we don't try to take advantage of something in Sam's rookie year, you know, while his rookie year deals is still here, whew, we're going to have some issues, man, going forward. Yeah, and that's the one thing which, like, when you if you ask, and I, I try to ask people that aren't Jets fans to get their, like, the outside perspective, mm-hmm. what they think about our team, and, and they ask me, like, and their first question is, do you think the Jets have been improved during free agency? And my honest answer is I have absolutely no idea. Like, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, you, you look at, you know, some of the, like the offensive line to me is still a question mark. There's a lot remains to be seen in terms of can these guys play together? Can they stay healthy? Can they be coached up well? I have no idea. You know, I, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say Perryman is as good as Robbie Anderson or better. He's got to prove it. I mean, they're, they're, that's not a, that's like, there's so many, like, there's so many givens being, oh, Perryman's great. He's going to be great for us. He's automatically great. The offensive line, we, we upgraded everywhere. I can't say that anywhere. To me, the offense is still a concern. Now, the defense, I have a little bit more faith in because of Greg Williams. And this year, if he can stay healthy, he's a good player. Poole and Jenkins both made sense. Neville Hewitt, all these guys in the middle. The linebacker they signed from the Ravens. You know, they, they made, like, the defense is not my concern. I like to see a pass rusher, of course, maybe another corner. Mm-hmm. But you look at the offense, Joe, and, like, our problem last year was the offense. Our problem going into yeah. this year is still the is still the unknown of the offense. <laughs> if you look at free agency, right? But the, the our whole free agency oh. plan was get us to have a professional, productive offense that can maximize Sam's potential. Can we say that with any kind of confidence that that's happened thus far? I can't say that. I'm not even being negative. I'm trying to be honest. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what it is. You're just trying to be honest. Uh, I, I think that anyone that is going into, you know, this draft or going into this offseason, again, with the moves that we currently made, um, just saying, hey, everything's good, everything's upgraded, I think you kind of have to take the green glasses off a little bit and really look at this. There's no way you can look at this offensive line and say, it's, you know, it, it's way better than last year's. You know, you can't. Some names have been shuffled around. Some guys have been brought back. There's been a, a, a slight upgrade there, again, at center with Connor McGovern. I thought that was a good move. Pass rushers that were screaming down on Sam, a lot of those guys were coming from the outside, and they were getting pressure easily. I'm talking about easily. You could have had four sacks in a game, Tyson, against us. I mean, it was that bad. We saw it all throughout the year with various guys. It didn't matter if it was a top-tier pass rusher or a middle-of-the-road guy. You know, they were getting to us. It didn't even matter if you were a big name or a no name at all. They were getting to Sam, and they were punishing him. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I keep saying that. We'll see what happens going forward. I know a lot of things have also been changed because Gaze is going to change his scheme just a little bit. Um, but let me tell you, if things are not, you know, 
improved, we will see that coming soon because they're going to start playing these teams that are really going to bring it to us. No, I completely agree. And it's, and like I said, you, you want it to all work out. You want to see everybody. You want to see all the moves work. You want to see the team play well. You want to see the team be competitive. That, that's our goal. Like, our goal is to be winning. Like, we want to win. Like, I'm, I'm tired of losing. Like, I hate it. I hate talking about losing. I hate questioning the front owner. Like, I hate questioning everything. But up until this point, I have no reason not to. Because, Joe, in many ways, we've seen this before. We've seen this approach before. We've seen these calculated risks before. We've done this. Like, we're not, like, two-year fans. Like, we, we, so, yeah. for me, questioning it just makes sense. So, like I said, on defense, it makes sense. But now, I want to get your take on the middle linebacker position now. Because now it's getting really interesting where Joe Douglas has mm-hmm. an affinity for middle linebackers. I mean, we have, what, four of them now. So, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure if Joe Douglas is waiting to see if both Brian Winters and Avery Williamson can stay healthy and pass a physical before they make a decision. Are they trying to figure out yeah. how sure all these guys sign their contracts? Like, it just seems weird now. These guys are still here. Like, I, I don't... I'm not really sure what they're doing now. What, what are your thoughts on middle linebacker? Yeah, you know, I mean, when I look at the middle linebacker position, like you said, there's a lot of guys there now. Um, you know, Avery Williamson, of course, is still here uh, with Mosley and Burgess and Neville Hewitt being signed. And then, the, you know, the backer that we brought in that used to play with the Ravens. I mean, there's a lot of guys there. Um, Cashman still, too. So I'm thinking that he's just going to try to see if Avery Williamson is healthy, if he can pass the physical, and if he looks good. Um, still a guy, again, that is approaching this situation and looking and saying, hey, Williamson should still be on this roster. This is a guy that I want to see, you know, him come back and be able to be paired with Mosley. I think that's just an outstanding duo right there. And the production that we can get from him, because, again, I know people are saying, hey, he's coming back from that ACL injury. But, dude, you look at today's modern medicine, there's players that have torn their ACLs. They come back like nothing happened, and they're good to go. And they, they go right back in the form. There's, there's a lot of players that have done that. And, I mean, we're not dying in cap room either, you know, and with the production that you would get from him, you know, I think he's making $6 million or $6.5 million. I think that's fine for a guy that's going to bring the type of production that he's bringing to be healthy. You're good to go. You know, that's not – you're not breaking the bank for him at all at that, at that point. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But I'd like to see him continue to be on the roster um, and, you know, give us what he's got this season because I really think he'd be able to bring it. Yeah, it's fascinating. Like, you know, like, I, like this is the sarcastic part of me, but it's like, all right, we're signing all these middle linebackers. How about we go for some, like, outside linebackers and get, like, a plethora of wide receivers? Like, we play the wide receiver mm-hmm. game, like, bring in a bunch of wide receivers. Or, like, like it, to me, it's just funny, Joe. Like, uh, like, I'm so focused on the offense, like, Defense is like, all right, that's cool. All right, cool. But, like, show me, like, how about some running backs? How about some wide receivers? How about we just play with that game for a while? Like, bring an explosive talent here where we can say, hey, you know what? We're giving, we're giving Sam some tools to play with now. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and, and that's, that's what I've – dude, I've been talking about that for so long. It's, I've been talking about that at nauseum on the show. So not just because I love Sam Darnold, because I do. You know, I'm an SC guy. We all know the history there. He's the greatest ever. <laughs> but – it's just like you can't roll around with the last-ranked offense in the league and think that you're going to do anything in this league. We, we are literally in a league that is slanted towards the offense. It is slanted for you to score points. It is slanted for you to be able to launch the football all around the field. It's slanted for you to put up numbers, like astronomical numbers. That's just crazy. The league is literally slanted for you to do that, and we cannot do any of that. And it doesn't even matter whether it's a good team. We've been stuffed by bad teams by really bad teams. We got completely broken off this year. When you look at this situation, again, I, I know that people want to go wide receiver. I'd love to see Jerry Judy. I'm going to keep screaming that. I would love to see Jerry Judy on this roster. But if we go into the draft and you have not made a move to solidify that left tackle spot, and if the left tackle is there, I don't know how you can choose a wide receiver over a left tackle. I don't know how you can do that. Because we've seen the lack and the void, when there's a void of talent on the offensive line, when there's a void of talent at that spot, that it affected the wide receiver position. We saw this year, you know, there were times where Robbie, not just Robbie, but other wide receivers would be kind of, you know, got a step or break over, and Sam wouldn't be able to get the ball there because he was running for his life already. (laughs) He wasn't even looking at you anymore. He was trying to, he was looking death in the face. He was trying to get away. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, those questions, those questions have to be answered. So I'm hoping that he can make a move to solidify that tackle spot again. I'm going to keep banging the table for Trent Williams. Please get that done because if you get that done, dude, that opens up, you know, your versatility with that pick. You could either wait, got to, you know, come down, whether it's C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy. I know people love Henry Ruggs as well. 
uh, you know, wherever he is there. But that also opens you up to maybe trade down and still get a guy in the first two because there's other wide receivers too that could still be there. Um, so, man, you gotta you got to figure that spot out. Because if you don't, we're sitting there waiting. And, again, there's a, also a chance that those, those tackles that we're talking about, those four, they couldn't be there at all at that point. That, a lot of those guys could already be gone. And you don't want to be sitting there in that position either. So then, now you ain't got no answers. You know what I'm saying? And the ball's not in your corner anymore because you don't have any leverage. Because teams are going to know that you're in, in, in need of a left tackle. You're in need of that tackle help. So they can sit there and wait. Okay, well, you go into the season with what you got. Get your quarterback killed. No problem with me. You know, so... We, we've got we've got to figure this out soon. We've got to start making moves. Because like I said, getting Sam an offensive weapon, getting Sam a wide out that he can depend on, will, it, it'll vastly improve him as a QB. If you look around the league, that's what, that's what everybody's doing. Look, look what they did in Arizona. They went, they, yep. you know, Lance Fitzgerald, great wide receiver, great. They got a young kid out there, Kyler Murray. He's trying to find his way. Larry Fitzgerald, great guy. He's going towards the end of his career. Let me tell you something. They went and got Hopkins. They said, we're going we gonna to light it up today. We're going to give you somebody. But hell, if you, even if you look at where Hopkins came from, to Texas, Deshaun, he was there because of Deshaun Watson. They brought a guy in so Deshaun, you know, would get it going. They, they made that connection. They made sure that Deshaun had weapons out there. It's not just him out there either. They got other weapons too. You know, if you look around this league, they've armed guy. Lamar Jackson, he's got targets. All these other guys, they have targets that they can throw to. Hell, even uh, the damn Bills quarterback, as bad as he is, yep. he's got targets. They just went and got digs. So it's like even a guy that can't throw, they're trying to give him somebody to throw to. You know what I'm saying? So we've got to do the same thing. We can't keep jacking around and expecting Sam to make magic with nothing. We cannot do that. You're putting him in a bad position. You're putting him in a, a position where he almost can't succeed with these bum-ass wideouts. That's not how the league works. Get him somebody so that we can start ripping the league up. We've got to do that. No, and that's exactly what I was going to talk about. And it was like, we'll go to calls next. But it was like, and, mm-hmm. and the weird thing is, Joe, because our season sucked so bad last year, we had most of these conversations during the season. We've got to build around Sam. We've got to build around Sam. This offense sucks. And the stats backed it up. They were statistically one of the worst offenses in football. They were terrible. And, you know, and they win some games at the end. They beat teams. I mean, they, whatever, the six, six out of eight games, nonsense. But whatever. You look at, like, we don't have to look far to see how to build around your offense. The Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. they are going above and beyond to give. Like I said, I'm not a Josh Allen fan. The kid, he, listen, they made the playoffs. He did what he had to do. He made some good throws, made some bad throws. He is they are trash. Him, but, dude, you know what? They're giving him every opportunity in the world to succeed because they're surrounding him with playmakers. So, you know what? If you mm-hmm. have three or four receivers and you have two good running backs and you get the guys, all he's got to do is get the ball to them in space and let them do the work. Yep. Now, Jets yep. Twitter, they're telling me, but, bro, we have Braxton Berrios and we have Vincent Smith and we have <laughs> Jeff Smith. Like, but, dude, what? Like, what are you selling me now? So now, now the Joe Douglas fan base is telling me how good this is our guru, and that's what we're doing. Like they give they give Josh Allen Stephon Diggs, and you're giving me Vincent Smith. No offense to Vincent Smith, but I mean, dude, like, like what, this is the game we're playing now. Like, get, like they, you know, they have Devin Singletary. They have running backs that are all faster than lightning. Like they 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 have their vision, and right now, Joe, to be honest with you. We don't know what the Jets' vision on offense is. We don't know. Yeah. Because they have Le'Veon yeah. Bell there, which they don't know how to use. You have no running backs <laughs> behind them. You have Crowder, Perryman, and Manny Moe and Jack. That's it. Man. That's our vision on offense. Yeah. Well, it's a vision. Anytime Adam Gaze is, is trying to correct your vision for an offense, you're blind. Look, at the end of the day, if you like you said, you look at how the Bills are investing in Josh Allen. What are they doing? They're investing right now so heavily in the offense to continue to boost when he's on his rookie year deal. That's why they went and made that, that move for Diggs. I know a lot of people think they overpaid. They gave up a lot. Okay, fine, whatever. But they're doing that. Because now is the time. If we're going to go all in, because they were a playoff team, they were there, what do they need? They need that breakout number one. They did that with, you know, Beasley and, and John Brown. <laughs> they got there with Beasley and John Brown. Now you add Diggs in there, things get more explosive. you got an elite number one guy that you can go to. So they're saying we're going to cash in right now, and we're going to go and try to, try to get ourselves a Super Bowl. We're going to try to compete and get ourselves some wins out here while we, this kid's on his rookie year. We don't have to pay him an astronomical amount of money. We don't have to give him half the franchise right now. That's what we should be doing. 
we should be built like the Bills are. <laughs> That's exactly what we should Crazy. be doing. So I, I'm hoping, <laughs> I know, right? I'm hoping that, you know, we find our way here. Because like you said, I, you know, the plan kind of looks, you know, a little a little misty right now. Things are looking a little foggy, but I'm hoping things clear up a little bit, especially with the draft and some of the moves that could be made there. But we've got to give Sam targets. Because as far as I'm concerned right now, we don't have a number one or two wide receiver. I'm sorry. I respect Perriman. He's cool and everything. He's not a two. He's not, he's not a two in this league. Oh, he's just going to give us. No, we need a number one and number two. And I know people are going to scream Quincy and Numa. I love Quincy to death. Never healthy. Never. I think he's a, I don't has he ever, like, had a full, maybe one season? I think he's played most of the season or all of the season. He's been hurt, like, the last couple seasons, and he's missed big time, big time every year. And now he's dealing with this uh, spinal stenosis. We don't know even how he's going to return from that at this point. So, dude, you can't have Sam out there, first off, running for his life, then second off, having nobody to throw to. We, we are literally writing the book on how to destroy a young quarterback. That's literally what we're doing. Give them trash coaching, check. Don't protect them. Give them an awful offensive line, check. Give them no, no targets to throw to whatsoever, check. <laughs> what else do you need? At least we're consistent. What, I mean, what, yeah, well, I, yeah, that's about all we're consistent. Hell, ch- change his offensive scheme multiple times while he's, while he's here as he's drafted. Check, we've done that too. <laughs> we've done it all. And, and we continue to see flashes out this kid where it's like at times we're like, this dude is special. Some of the throws that he's making, even with some of the guys we have out there, it's like, wow, this kid is special. But we've got to surround him with talent, man. We can't keep trotting this nonsense out there year after year going, well, Sam will win it. If he's good enough, he'll just put the team on his back. Not if the linebackers and defensive end are already on his back from the opposing team. You can't expect him to go out there and take shot after shot, run around and just make something happen. That's not how it works in this league. You have to get him weapons. You have to get him somebody to throw to. And that needs to be a big-time emphasis, again, with this draft coming up. I've been screaming it for so long. Invest in the offense. We've invested in this defense for so long. Look where it's got us. Invest in this offense. Invest in the offense in an offensively driven league. (laughs) It's that simple. Yeah, and the thing is, too, is that you kind of hope that with your free agency moves, you, you kind of afford yourself some flexibility in the draft. Like if you exactly. say if you would have signed your left tackle in the free agency, you don't go into the first round of the draft desperate as hell saying, you know what? Like, Joe, you said it perfectly. Nope. Like, you don't want to go in there being desperate for a left tackle, and then everybody across the NFL knows that. So you're sitting there mm-hmm. at 11 sweating profusely because you're like, oh, my God, when you want these guys, and three of them are gone. Do we have to trade up with assets we really don't want to give up? Like, that's kind of like yep. the thing. It's like, you know, you, everybody praised the George fan signing. Hey, that's great, man. Everybody loves him. That's awesome. But if you're not comfortable with him being your left tackle, you just spent $9 million this year for a guy you're not sure about going into the draft trying to draft that guy, hoping that that yep. one's there at, at 11. So you don't even, like, yep. you go through, say, your say your first stage and a half of free agency – not, not even giving yourself draft flexibility. Like, you're still going in there yeah. with legitimate holes where you're like, you know what, we can make a very good case you need a left tackle. We can make a very good case you need a goddamn starting wide receiver. So you have two Ooh. holes, one spot. That's not really draft flexibility. Three. <laughs> yeah. That, that, well, that, pass, rush, draft, give me a lump list. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but I, you saying two, I'm saying three. I think, uh, like I said, I still think we need a number one and a number two. I mean, like you, you just hit the nail on the head, and I was talking about it earlier as well. Look. You go in there, and, and you, they, people know you're thirsty for a left tackle. There's Again, I've said this before. I've talked about this going up into free agency. That's why it was important to go after Trent is because there are teams ahead of us that need left tackles too. Outside of that, there are teams below us that could jump us. We are not in the business of getting rid of capital to trade up. We are not in that space. We, we, we don't have that luxury of doing that. We need every pick that we can possibly get. That's why when people keep saying, well, we'll just draft that, we keep looking at them like, you can't draft all this stuff that we're talking You can't draft this all in one draft. We need every single pick we need, even if you're talking about taking away from next year. Because, again, those picks are, are like gold to us as well because we still need holes because of all these one-year deals. You've got to fill those, those holes with somebody. So if you take away from next year's draft, that's going to hit you too. 
So it's like we've got to be able to do something here. We've got to we've got to make sure that every pick counts. I'm serious. I don't think people understand this the urgency that I'm talking about because again, that rookie year deal is coming to a close. Guys are getting paid. I talked about Ryan Tannehill, twenty nine million dollars. That is Ryan Tannehill. He's getting twenty nine point five mil a year. You got Watson coming up for a deal. You got Patrick Mahomes coming up for a deal. You got uh, 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 you, you got Jackson coming up for a deal. Him and Sam were drafting and saying he's going to be coming up for a deal. Dude, by the time we have to pay Sam, you're going to have to give that dude half the franchise seriously to get here to stay here. Excuse me. You're going to have to give him half yeah. the franchise, and then that's really well, the same time ability to build this football team. Go ahead. Well, and, and the same thing is while we we're going to have to pay him. We also want to see what we have in them. Like Sam, exactly. Sam has shown potential to be that. a very yep. – but that's the whole thing. Like we yep. shown some potential, but you know what? Two years from now, I want to know what the hell Sam Donald is. Can he play 16 exactly. games? Can he be a high-scoring offense? Is he a quality quarterback? Yep. Like We all have high aspirations for him, but he's actually got to do it on the field. And this we year, I mean, dude, like, mm-hmm. like right? Like, he's got to, like – well, listen, his, he, great work his, ethic, great kid, but he's got to yeah. show it, man. And we need to get it out of him. Yeah. We need to give him that yeah. platform. And that, and that's exactly what I was going to talk about as well. Look, you don't want to give him that type of money and still have question marks about him. That would be the worst thing you could do is pay him how we're going to have to pay him to be here and then have question marks about him, not know if he's there. Because as much as I love Sam and everybody else, most fans do too as well, most, there's some that think he's a bust. I'll leave, you know, to each his own. <laughs> but, you know, the ones that, that believe in him, a lot of us were still saying, hey, you know, Sam, he had a decent year, but he didn't take the step that we all thought he would. Of course, there were a lot of, you know, things going on, reason why that, but we were still kind of left like, uh, maybe next year he really takes that gigantic step forward, but there's so many things that need to be improved around him. We still have question marks about him. We're still trying to figure out what he is. And I was talking about that with somebody on Twitter. I need to know, like, where are you? Are you closer to Peyton Manning or are you closer to Ryan Leaf? I need to know. <laughs> I need to know now, before I give you that money, before I give you half the franchise, before I tie us to you for years to come, I need to know where you are on that scale. Where are you at? I need to know. Because the worst yep. thing we could do is not know, give him that money, and then be screwed. <laughs> Let me tell you, we've seen that as well. We've seen teams pay quarterbacks that they had question marks about, and it completely destroyed them. We are not in the space to do anything like that. That's why I've been talking about investing so heavily in the offense because I'm going to figure out who Sam Donald is before I have to pay him. And if he's not the guy, okay, that's fine. We can move on from him, and we can bring another guy in. But if he is the guy, then I need to make sure that he stays around. we got to know that. And don't tell me that we don't, Jets fans, that we can move on because guess what? We don't have a long, illustrious history here of having franchise quarterbacks. <laughs> we don't have that. I know there are so many Jets fans like, well, we'll just move on. But what are you talking about move on? What was the last franchise quarterback that we had? We were screaming for a franchise quarterback. I remember half of y'all cheering for Ryan Fitzpatrick to get re-signed. Screaming about that. Talking about when we got him back, we were going to win the Super Bowl. You remember that? Tyson, you, you mm-hmm. remember those shows. Oh, like, I remember. Come on, guys. <laughs> like, Wait, hold you know this hostage. I'm saying. <laughs> think about it. We were. Let, you just. You just hit the nail on the head again. Think about this, fans. We were being held hostage by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Think about that. <laughs> think about the desperation. Think about how low you were. So, like, come on, dude. We need to invest, and we need to figure out who this guy is. I, I, I feel like I already know who he is, but, again, he's got to also prove that out there. But we have to give him the tools to be able to get the job done. Yep. No arguments here, man. I, I completely agree with you. I 1,000% agree with you. And, it's, and this isn't, you know, like I said, and it's not being negative. It's not being a troll. It's not being a jerk. It's just saying, no. listen, look at the state of the team. Look how the team entered free agency, how they supposedly improved it, what our holes are, how much draft resources we have, and what we have going forward. And they're, they're, if you're not seeing the big picture, I really can't help you because there are this need, there's a lot of work to be done with the draft, other free agent moves. There's still plenty of holes all around the team, and this and Joe Douglas and Adam Gates have to provide us with some kind of vision on offense. And like a Joe, I'm like you, man. I don't want to wash you this year with the offense. Like, oh, you know what? 
no. the learning curve and the rebuild and this and that. We got to change this, and, dude. Because it, we we can't like you just can't you can't have built-in excuses every year. Like, you just can't. No. Like at some point you got to pay the piper, and that piper is Sam Darnold. And he, I mean, it's just it's. So what we're gonna do is we'll go we'll go to the calls nine two nine four seven seven two six five one. Um, again, ten dollar. I'm doing a a fundraiser for the local food banks here in New Jersey. Ocean Monmouth County and the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, ten dollars to enter. Just hit me up on uh, Twitter, T R A U C H twenty one, and I hook you up. We got about like twenty eight or twenty nine entries left, and we're all set. And Joe, we're gonna go to Ronaldo in New York. Ronaldo, what's up, man? I'm first. That's funny. <laughs> what's up, boys? What's up? How you doing, man? You right over there? Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. I'm drinking. I'm so great. So what, are you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on David Fanners, man? <laughs> David Fanners, oh my, I don't even know who that guy is. Let's just be honest. Skip the question. That dude's a joke. So what are your thoughts on the Jets talking four middle linebackers? No, no, no. We got to give it to somebody. Somebody got to get cut. Somebody got to get cut. Avery Williamson, I think he's called to go. Mm. Okay. Show your thoughts. <laughs> No. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you for calling in, Renato. You know, I'm. Uh, I, I see you. You know, you 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 drinking. You doing your thing. I I, I, yeah. I see you through. You feeling good. You know what I'm saying? That's a, yeah. That that you know. Hey, you know. I hey, we got haters. You know we got haters, man. We got haters. I, I hear you. I hear you. You grooving, baby. You feeling good. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? I want you to enjoy yourself. And again, I want to thank you for calling in. Look, I hear you. Okay, I I, I so from a lot of people. I don't necessarily think that we should get rid of Avery, but I know that others do. Um, I, I think that we should keep him around for Woody, for Woody, Woody's being paid. It's not a lot for the production that he could give us if he's fully healthy. That's why I don't want to get rid of him. You know what I'm saying? But I want to talk to you about the offensive side of the football. I want to talk to you about the offensive side of the football. What are your thoughts about this offensive line, and do you think that it's been drastically improved so far based on what we had last year? I mean – we might as well get the ambulance ready for Sam Donald because this offensive line is a joke. We have no hope. I mean, what? Like, who is Connor McGovern is going to be on center? Really? 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 This other dude, Van, Van Lee, I don't know what this dude's name. Van Poven, what? Like, who are these guys? <laughs> and, like, what are they doing? We're not the man. <laughs> For not like, hey, good night, man. Hey, man. I, can't, I can't take any more. I can't take hey, any more, dude. Like, hey, hey, listen. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen. <laughs> Whatever he's sipping on, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, I know we got, you know, uh, kids listening and everything. He's having his adult beverage. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm very sure of that. And he's, he's got more than one. You know what I'm saying? Listen, it's a Tuesday night, you know what I'm saying? He's feeling all right. So I'm okay, you know, with him doing his thing. He's a man of a certain age, so he's good to go there. But I want to thank him again for calling in, you know what I'm saying? Keep enjoy your, keep enjoying yourself and be safe out there, Ronaldo. Yeah, man, that's quarantine life, man. You're home, sitting there, you have some beverages. Hey. I get it. I understand it. Hey, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's you know, <laughs> a little sip sip here and there, a little cup of two. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with it, he, you know, to himself. You know, like I said, he moving and grooving. You know what I'm saying? I understand. All right, we're going to go to Mr. Tyrone. What's up, man? <laughs> what up, what up, fellas? What's going on, man? Oh, uh, you know, just sitting here looking at this Jets roster and trying to be honest and objective and not drink too much Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? Yo, I'm about to dig in, and I'm probably, I don't know how this is going to go, but <laughs> it's about to get real, <laughs> real right now. Yo, listen, I got about four points I want to make, man. You know, everyone keeps saying about getting Sam some help, right? And I, I'm all for building up our offensive line. We need to take a receiver in the first round and also in the third round. Listen, mm-hmm. you have to give Sam somebody to get the ball to. I mean, you want to mm-hmm. fix the offensive line, but then we want to go with what with the second best receiver, get this man somebody that can catch the ball. Get him two receivers. Take three if you have to. This is how, you yeah. know, I mean, we can, we can sign Peters and draft somebody in the third round and get them ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Joe Douglas is an offensive guy, an offensive line guy. He can find somebody that, that's, that's a year off that can, that can sit back for a year. It makes no sense not to give Sam no weapons. This is why our offense is deprived. And I'm going to be honest with you. 
Sam is the best quarterback in our division since Brady's gone. He is. Sam is really talented. If you get this guy, if you build this lineup, you get this guy some weapons, it, it, sky's the limit. And also, one more thing. Everyone that wants to trade for the cat from Jacksonville, I don't. I say we don't do that as well. <laughs> You know yeah. what I'm saying? That makes no yeah. it makes no sense to trade for him. You know what I'm saying? Everyone yeah. everyone on, on Facebook, Twitter is like, yo, we need to trade for him. We need him right now. For what? He had what, nine sacks, eight sacks last year? Seven sacks last year? I think George Jenkins had more sacks than he did. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, Jacksonville defensive line is way better than ours. So you know, I mean, you got to look at what we need. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, look, sign yeah. the clowny. That's just retarded. It makes no sense yeah. to sign somebody. You want to sign somebody, <laughs> yo, go, go get me. Listen, I'll take Clay Matthews and draft somebody. I'll take something like that. <laughs> of course we need a pass rusher. You know what I'm saying? We need a pass mm-hmm. rusher for the last 10 years. But this is what we need. But if we're going to fix our defense, you know what I'm saying, you're going to fix our offense, give this kid some weapons. How are you going to know how good yeah. Sam is with no weapons? Yeah, and, and you're right. And, and I want to thank you for calling in, Tyrone. And I hear you. You know, I'm right there with you. I've been talking about boosting up this offense and, and making moves, but the only thing that I would disagree with you is is I don't understand how you can – and I look, I love Jerry Judy. I'm going to keep saying that. I think C.D. Lamb is amazing as well. Um, I, I love these guys that are going to be, especially the top end of this drafted wide receiver, phenomenal guys. But I do not see how you can look at it. If we don't trade for Trent Williams – and you're looking at Fant being a left tackle, I do not see how you can choose one of these wide receivers over a tackle, especially when okay, you see okay. the hindrance, the hindrance that, not, <laughs> that bad blocking and horrific offensive line play will, <laughs> will do to Sam. We've seen it. It's been on full display this entire year. I'm talking shot okay. after shot after shot, game after game. I don't see how yeah, you it, can do that because guess what? If you have a bad left tackle – that completely nullifies the wide receiver we just drafted because you're not going to be able to get him the ball. And, and Joe, this, okay, I can answer that for you. Okay, what about Peters? What about bringing Beecham back? Listen, I understand that we need to fix our offensive line. I understand that. But, listen, you know, we are going to have a short enough season. Man, you cannot expect a guy who's going to draft in the second and third round to come in and produce in his first year. A guy like Jerry Judy, who is a technician and route running, this guy is going to get open for Sam. That's what Sam needs, yeah. targets. That's why he doesn't hold the ball. No, the reason Sam got hit so much last year is because our coach is an idiot. You have long plays, bro. You have long, drawn-out <laughs> plays, bro. Like, if you get the ball in somebody to a quick receiver's hands, Sam, if you get the ball out of his hands, you make your offensive line better. No, he wants to, yo, cut, drop back Sam, duck this guy, duck this guy. Robbie, you just go deep 40 yards down the field. Bro, it's, 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 un, it's unconscionable. Listen, this is the problem, man. You, have, you know, I understand that our line is necessary and needs to be fixed, but a lot of that was scheme as well. That was coaching. That was the error in our coach not knowing that, okay, you can't do yo a long drawn out play when you know you don't have a chance. If you have somebody with Robbie doing when Sam get the ball in his hand, and listen, and this is no knock on Robbie, but Robbie wasn't a great route runner. Robbie couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Robbie could do it. Robbie got better. Don't get me wrong, but Robbie wasn't a great route runner. Who was the best? Who was the best receiver on our team last year? And Le'Veon Bell, best two receiver on the team, hands down. So when you have when you don't have a number one. Or number two, you really have like a number two slash number three on the field. I mean, you know, but you're expecting our quarterback to, to perform at a high level. You want to have a passing offense with subpar receivers? Does not make any sense? It's not feasible, man. Listen, you have to give Sam targets. You have to give him above quality receivers. Like, I want to go back to the old days when we had Santana Holmes and Braylon Edwards. Yo, take Jerry Judy and then grab somebody like the dude from uh, Notre Dame, Tyson's boy, you know what I'm saying, in the third round. Give me somebody <laughs> Yo, get that big target. No, but listen, get that big target. Get um old boy from um old boy from um Ohio State in the later rounds. It's a lot of receivers you can get in the later rounds that you don't need to produce as much, but you need Sam to have somebody. Look, we go into the season, we got Vincent Jackson, uh, um um guy we got from Tampa. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even counting in New Orleans, bro. He hasn't played in two years. I mean, bro, whatever. And you know you have Crowder. You have nobody for him to throw the ball to. You understand that? That is that is that is a that's a significant decline in our offense and into our quarterback. I mean, imagine uh, having somebody like Tom Brady got Wes Walker. Give give Sam Brady. Give me give me give give Sam Donald 
a Wells Walker type receiver. Give him somebody that Julius well, he Edelman also, type yeah, receiver. Somebody. Know, he also got to keep in mind. He also had. Yeah, he also had, he had Welker. He had Edelman. He had Gronkowski. He had all kinds of playmakers. It was he had a, a play, plus all the running backs. He had what? He had uh, Deion Lewis, Tyson. James White, and all these yeah. other guys. They had playmakers but, all yeah, around them. That's a difference. Tyson, listen. I mean. We don't have Gronkowski, but we got a Herndon. You know what I'm saying? We got it. We got a decent tight end. What is Herndon? You know what I'm you know Herndon yeah, but, is? <laughs> yeah, that, Herndon's I mean, got a lot of question marks about him. He's not even healthy. I mean, but listen. Okay, uh, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. I mean, fellas. I mean, uh, listen, listen. I mean, I got it. I have to kick some kind of some kind of optimism into this, bro. Because, listen, I mean, everyone is sitting about... Everyone is talking about this doom and gloom, and we need to build the lineup. I understand building lineup, bro. But we have imp- we have in- we have improved our line from Dude, last year. Why is it doom and gloom? But what is the doom and gloom? I well, mean, we be- don't know what we have in offensive because- line. It's not. It's like draft tackle is still unknown. We're going into the draft with an unknown know. left tackle, which is a priority going into. So but- how's it? It's not ideal. But we don't know what we have. We didn't sign all three all pros. We signed journeyman guys. But let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm ready. Signed- yeah. If, if, if we trade for Trent Williams or we sign Peters, right? Okay. Let me ask you a question. And we still took a tackle in the, in the 11th pick. What receiver does Sam have that you're scared of? What receiver? What receiver on the team that's that scares that's you? That you got to, huh? That, that's oh, the problem. problem. That, I've been saying this. I've been saying this is the problem all along. This is I like. I'm not sure what Perryman is. Like I'm not saying five games to me doesn't make him an All Pro receiver or a good receiver. Exactly. Or an exactly. Robbie like, like, it, it, dude, exactly, I'm not saying you know, we need playmakers. Like, but see, if you make it, if, yeah. you, if you trade for Trent Williams, say you give a third round pick for Trent Williams, that number eleven pick is a receiver. That you're done. That's it. You know what you're going. Number exactly. eleven, the best receiver available is your guy. Then, then but free agency still, helps you with your draft. But what if? But what if you? What if you got Peters? Well, you got Peters for one year contract. If you draft well, somebody in, in, in the second or third round, I mean. No, I mean, I'm just saying, bro, listen, my own, my own philosophy is this, you know, and I had to change that because I want to tackle that first. But I'm just looking at it like this, man. We have to get this young man, somebody that, that that's a game-breaker type receiver. Robbie wasn't that. Robbie's a number two at best. He, you know what I'm saying? He's going to go to Carolina, and he's not going to produce like he did with us. He's not. He's not. And listen, because he was forced to be our number one, and he wasn't a good number one. Robbie disappeared in games. You know what I'm saying? Yep. They've never had nobody reliable to throw the ball to. Imagine a guy getting off the line that, that, can, that can make two good moves and be where he's supposed to be in the spot. We didn't have a receiver. We, we haven't had one like that since Sam's been here. Who's been Sam's best receiver since Sam's been drafted? Who's been his best receiver? Please let me know. I'll Crowder. Exactly. Hold on. Crowder got here last year. Who was his best receiver before that? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is, right. Exactly. Exactly. Dude, I agree. You I'm on your side, Tyrone. I'm like an, I'm all about know, yeah. the playmakers, man. Like, hey, like once Sammy Watson comes question. available or Brandon Cooks comes available, I'm going to be all about listen. We're in a, we're, we're becoming already, to the point now. It's like we're going to be becoming desperate now. Like, and that's like we're we're, we're going to be frugal now. And then once the draft comes or something else, they're like, you know, now we're going to overpay for Sammy Watkins or something. You can see it because they're, no, they're going to have to, man. I, I don't even want Sammy Watkins. Get somebody that Sam can grow with. Get Sam his, you know what I'm saying? Get Sam his receiver that, okay, look, we're going to be together for the next five to ten years. Let's go get it. You know what I'm saying? Give him somebody that can be his security blanket. You know what I'm saying? If that's, if, you know, whoever that is receiver-wise. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you a question. If we had, if we had Brandon Edwards, uh, not Brandon Edwards, I'm sorry, uh, Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker with Sam, you think Sam would be a lot better? Way better? I mean, his quality receivers, would he be way better than what he's, what he's shown the last two years? And I have been a person yeah, yeah. he's done the last two years. So if you, have the, if you give him talent, you know, everyone keeps saying infuse talent into this team. You have to. We're lack. listen, we, we, listen, bro, we have nobody on our offense that scares anybody. And the only person they probably really scared of was Le'Veon Bell and Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. And they knew that you didn't have, they knew you didn't have an offensive line, so you knew you couldn't run the football. You know what I'm saying? This is all, you know, I mean, like I said, man, I mean, I think what Joe Douglas has done so far and the deals he's made, I think is great. You know what I'm saying? I think for what, he, for what it is for this team, because he's still trying to figure out what we got. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not annoying him, because I remember when, when McCagney, yo, know, his first year at the McCagney, he won GM of the year. I thought we, I thought we hit gold. <laughs> How surely wrong I was. But you know, at the same time, <laughs> that one year, he did great. You know what I mean? He did yeah. great that first season after that 
the wheels fell off and he was exposed for who he was. I'm hoping Douglas with the team that he has can hit the gems in the third and fourth and fifth round. Those are where we need to hit at. Because, like, you know what I'm saying, we, we're, we're lacking that core middle. That's the whole problem. Everyone's talking about positions that we need. We need positions. We need to upgrade at every position, not just the ones that we have right now. The only two positions that we don't need upgrades are, are middle linebacker, safety, and quarterback. Everything else needs upgrade. Even with the players we got now, we still need to upgrade. So why not do that? So what if he finds these guys that might not produce exactly this year but can produce in the near future? That, that, that gives you something. Like, all these kids are going to come in this year, bro, and they're going to be, listen, there's no OTAs. They're probably going straight to training camp. They're going to rush through that, and then it's going to go into the season. Man, it's going to be some ugly football. So now you have ugly football, and you're depending on players that, you know what I'm saying, that they're rookies that you need to hit on. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be hard. But you have a quarterback like Sam, and I'm saying this, and I'm, call, I'm putting this out here right now. Sam is the best quarterback in our division. He is, he is the best quarterback. And I'm not saying that because he's my quarterback. If you put Sam on Buffalo, 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 go, Buffalo challenge for a Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? If you have Sam Donald in Buffalo, he challenged for a Super Bowl. I promise you. There will be, the be the new dynasty. You know what I'm saying? That's just how good he is. The kid is really talented, man. It's just he has a lack of talent. Josh Allen, Josh Allen has a, a prefer of talent that, you know what I'm saying, and a great defense. You know what I'm saying? They built Buffalo how we built, the, how Rex built us back in the day. Play good defense, maintain the game, don't lose it. You feel me? And our defense isn't that bad. But you have to have something when you have a quarterback. You have to give him weapons. You have to have him be able to do something. And I know my man Spotty Blackman going to come on today, and everybody else going to give me a hard time, and Joe and Tyson going to give me a hard time. But I don't care because it's the truth, man. We need this, man. And also, one more thing, man. Big up to my man Robbie Jersey. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. I know we're going to go at it, so I'm not even tripping. I already know you're probably sending me a message already saying something to me about build the line up. Man, man, me and Robbie have been going at it for about a month over this, bro. Yo, bro, we got to build right, Robbie, I understand that. But, bro, you can build all the line you want to. You have nobody to throw the ball to? It doesn't work. You feel me? You have all the day in the world with a receiver that can't get open? Come on, bro. <laughs> Tyrone. This is one. This is one of your best calls, man. You, and Joe and I are not harassing you. We're not hey, man, hey, on, this is hold, we're letting hold, you take your piece. I have a time number, number number one. My calls are always good. Let's get that out there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, I see you. So let's, 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 let's let's put that out there. This Come is quarantine, Tyrone. Oh, this is quarantine, Tyrone. This is this is Come quarantine, on, Tyrone. So you know this is how it is. Hey, Joe, let me tell you something, Joe. You're a man of the people. Come on. Next time I see you, Joe, I want to. Joe, next time I see you when all this is over, Joe, I want a hug, man. I'm going to give you $5 for it, all right? Don't even worry about it. I don't even want a hug for <laughs> no, you, man. I just want to get it. Come on, man. Because you my guy. Because you my guy, Joe. Because you my guy. Because every week you go at me, Joe. Every week, Joe, you try to pick at me. You try to say something. You just always want to disagree with Tyrone. But when Steve asks, come on here, Joe, you always like, well, you know, yep. this is what you meant. No, that's not what he meant, Joe. That's not what he said. <laughs> I'm just saying, man of the people. Wow. Man, li listen, first off, first off, again, thank you for calling. And listen, the hugs are free, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't let the haters tell you something. You ain't got to slide in five dollars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can keep hey, that. Hugs are free, man. Yeah, and he's a liar. Tyson already you know told me. He already told me. That's what I'm saying. Said the big, Tyson said the more money you give, the bigger hug you get. That's what I heard, y'all. Oh, true that is, bro. That's what they're saying about you on the streets, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's a lie, man. man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's that's a lie. That's what I'm Don't bring me into your nonsense, man. Don't even bring that's, me into your nonsense, man. Don't even start. Hey, Joe, <laughs> I, Joe, honestly, no, Joe, no, take I heard Steve, Steve, though, man. I, I heard Steve. I heard, no, no, no. I'm not taking a shot at Steve. Listen, I love Steve, man. I didn't like Steve at first, but I love Steve. Steve was a great caller. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And I do not respect Steve. You know what I'm saying? Steve be a little left. Steve be a little left field sometimes. But I love Steve, man. I mean, Steve, you know, I look forward to him. And matter of fact, yo, to my big homie, happy belated birthday, Steve. Nothing but love for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing but love. But, Joe, tell the truth. Is Steve paying you? That's all I want to know. The world wants to Come on, man. Is he paying you, Joe? Tell the truth. Nobody pays me, man. I stand for the What the hell is going on? I'll stand for him, man. Come on, come on, guys. I'm getting off here, man. I love you guys. You know what, Joe? 
You can't handle the truth, Joe. Tell America. We want to know. <laughs> Love you guys. Come yes, on. Hey, man, listen. Seriously, man, everybody be safe, man. Seriously, man, be safe. Be careful. Like, keep your loved ones close, man. Love you guys. All jokes aside, man. Love you, Jet Nation. Let's do what we do. Send me out here right there. We want to thank Tyrone for calling in. Thank you for also, he also donated too, so I want to thank him for that. Um, interesting, Joe. He, see, and the thing is, he expected all mm-hmm. this backlash, and I haven't been antagonist, antagonistic. I haven't done anything. I'm just trying to have mm-hmm. a conversation here, not attacking nobody. Yeah. He, he thinks, like, well, we're not, we're not competitive. Yeah. No, we're, first off, again, I want to thank Tyrone for calling in. We're not competitive. I just think, again, you know, this is where we come, we debate. Every fan has a different viewpoint and way that the team should build. You know, again, I've talked about offensive line still being a priority if we have an adjusted left tackle spot. But we also can understand why people want a wide receiver. But we all don't have to agree. We can definitely go back and forth and state our cases there. We're not combative. We don't go after people. Tyrone's one heck of a caller, though, man, and a great Jets fan. Yeah, so thank him for uh, calling in. Thank him for donating for the uh, the raffle and – Make sure he stays safe and like that. It's definitely some crazy times right yep. now. We are going to go to Mr. NYSF Magazine. Jay, what's up, man? That first caller you guys had tonight was one of the funniest Talk Jets moments ever, man. That was the best. You guys, my, my favorite thing about that, and, and this happens often because you guys, I guess you guys have a good chemistry, the two of you. You, you guys work well together. So, like, man, I, I tweeted it, but. There's always a moment in every call, like it, it's like maybe five, six seconds in, where both like Tyson will take a deep breath, and and Joe will just mumble <laughs> under his breath, and I'm like, man, these they know it is called. <laughs> and you guys hit that after like five seconds. It was a, it was one of the greatest moments, man. I wish you could rewind that, listen to that again. That that was hilarious, man. I was like, <laughs> hilarious. That's that's the kind of content you need during a global pandemic when you're locked in your house, man. That was I, I appreciate the laugh, man. It's been a minute. So but Jay, it's like you have like you're you're right though because like you had the first five seconds so you never know what you're getting yourself into like you never know what the call's gonna be about and like the first five <laughs> seconds I'm like yep he's hammered this is gonna be a mess I'm like please don't curse right off the bat <laughs> I, swear, I wish there was like a way to bet on like an over under of how long that call is gonna last like a, like one minute I would have taken the under but I think he made it over a minute Ty, you had extreme patience there man you let it know and then you were like. You're like, I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> you know this? Great like, radio. You just wait, you're waiting for the curse, and then it was like the slurred words. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we try to be nice and patient. And I know Joe is trying to be nice. I'm like, yeah, we can't let yeah. yeah. this one go on. But, but Jay, what are your, um, yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts? There's a, if you go on like Twitter and check everything out, it seems like the, the Jets fan base is kind of divided, where half the fan base loves everything Joe Douglas does, and the other half is kind of questioning things and kind of like, cautiously optimistic, but there are some concerns. Where do you fall in with that? Yeah, well, look, I mean, it's been so long since there's been a winner around here, right? And you said it best on that video, Ty, that you made. I mean, we all just want to win so damn bad. And then I think that what you got here is two groups of fans. You got the ones that, like, are starting to lose hope that they're they're ever going to see it again and uh, put me in that category because it's just been so damn long. And all I want to do is win. And then you have people that still haven't exactly, you know, fallen into that, like, you know, doom and gloom kind of outlook that we've just been kind of, you know, pounded into as fans. So um, I think that's the divide is people just want to believe, like, they just want to, you know, no matter what, they just want to believe that we're finally digging out of this hole and not think, you know, that it's going to be another who knows how long. So, um I mean, that's the divide. I, you know, I, you know what side of that I fall on. It's pretty damn obvious. Um, you know, and, and some people just, I, I think it's a lot of our younger fans, um, the younger crowd that hasn't, it hasn't been 40 years like it has for me and, and you, Ty, and, yeah. you know, but it's been like, you know, it's been, we've had some good years in 2010, so they're only really looking at like 10 years of this terribleness if they just started watching, in, you know, in the late um, 2005, 6, 7, 8, when they, were, when they were having success. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to, uh, you know, to kind of uh, look at when you're on either side because the, the people who are positive don't want to hear Jet fans be negative and they, they, they don't like when we do it. And, you know, and the, when you're negative, it's really hard to listen and you're like, oh, listen to this guy. He thinks that signing David Fales is a good idea, you know. So it's like it's, yeah. you don't see too many people falling in the middle anymore, man. It's hot take city all over the place. So everyone's going to defend yeah. their stance and that's where we're at as a fan base. 
Yeah, and, and, and Jay, I want to thank you for calling in. Look, I hear you, man. I also think a lot of fans don't take into account how much coaching, especially some the bad coaching that we've seen, can uh, affect us as well, can affect our success or our failures. I think a lot of people aren't looking not- at that either. They're just kind of looking at the – at the you know the talent standpoint or you know the, the players that we're acquiring um, as to so can being I, can I respond you know, to that? benchmark. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, want, I just want to respond to that before we get off that because because you made a great point because it's something that everyone needs to realize. Like I feel like we're in that in that second year. I, I hate to even do this and, and take it in this direction, man. But it's, this is how I feel. This is the second year of Rich Cotite, right? And Ooh. and and you know going into it we went three you know in the Cotet area we went three and thirteen not seven and nine but I feel like this is like I'm almost convinced this is going to be his last year here like I don't think the team is going to be very good this year and I don't see how they're going to bring him back after two years of that you know the fans are going to lose it so um, where we're at is basically um, you know <laughs> we're going into this and and hoping for the best and uh, what did they do in the second year of Cotet after that. They got rid of Cotite, and oh. Bill Parcells took over base. And it's, I know it's not easy to find a Bill Parcells, but just to illustrate your point that you just said, what a big difference coaching makes. He took basically the same exact team from, you know, from 96 to 97, and they went 1-15, and in the following year with good coaching, they went 9-7. and seven. They almost made the playoffs. And it was basically the same damn team. You know, and, and to that end, you know, what you guys were talking about, about drafting a wide receiver, the Jets, that was, they took a wide receiver. And that helped turn them around. Now, you know, they traded Keyshawn, turned him even more at this later on. So, you know, I'm not against drafting a wide receiver at this point. I mean, you've got to get Sam Weapons. Everything you guys said in the beginning of the show is 100% right. You, this is your yeah. third year of, of Sam Darnold. You can't waste any more time. You can't, you can't not give him weapons this year and then say, oh, we'll do that, we'll address that next season. You can't do that. It's time. Yeah. It has to happen right yeah. now. So you've got to get yeah. the men weapons. And that's why, like, that was a comment I made on Twitter. People were saying, oh, you know, we could, this, this guy, Jay Moore, you know, went to the comedian, did a thing with Christian Dyer and uh, a mock draft. Dude, he came up with, like, you know, drafting two corners before he even took a wide, two cornerbacks before taking a wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> two, not one. Oh, man. Oh, man, two. listen. I, I told, listen, if we take, I, we talked about this a couple of shows. If we take a corner in the first round of the draft, Right after that pick, we're going to go live because I'm going to lose my damn mind. <laughs> and that might be the first time where y'all see me really curse on this show because I don't really – I don't curse. Tyson, you know, he drops his bombs. It's a family show. I can, but I will lose my mind because that would make no sense. But, look, Jay, I, I hear you're not here where you're coming from. We definitely need weapons. <laughs> I, I, you know, we could talk about Gaze and his situation later, but the scary part of that is if you do fire him after this year, you're putting Sam in another system in, in, in one of the last years before his rookie year deal. So you'd have to find a guy that would be able to really fit his system with Sam does and hope, you know, that Sam would pick that up and get the success going early. But we we'll to talk about that later because that's what if he gets fired. But my question for you is, is, what do you say to the people that think, hey, you should still take a wide receiver even if we have a, a big void at left tackle? So if a left tackle is there, are you still taking a wide receiver if we don't have a left tackle in the building? Dude, it's very hard to do, man. You, 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 I'm a big proponent of building the offensive line first, huge proponent of building the offensive line first, and which is why I want to trade for Trent Williams and then draft the wide receiver as well, and you address both needs. And that, I mean, I, 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 we have the money. We've been bargain basement dollar store, you know, uh, dollar slice of pizza shopping the last three, the last like you know this whole off season. We have we have plenty of money to go at this point. I didn't I, listen. I know I, on previous shows I said you couldn't do it, but I also didn't realize we we're going to get Jordan Jenkins back for five million and 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 get Brian Poole back for five million. You know, I, you thought you were going. It's going to cost you a lot of money to replace those guys or sign them. So I couldn't see how you could do it. Now you can do it. You could trade for Trent Williams and, and address that left tackle situation. That's what, you know, if you hit on that and he stays healthy, you're the best left tackle in football. I mean, I, so I'm a big proponent of that. Draft your wide receiver, you address both needs, and then you still have a full array of draft picks. Trade, you know, trade one of the thirds and still take it that we have. It would be perfect. So, Jay, what are, what are your thoughts? I mean, slowly but surely, it seems like, you know, OTAs and minicamp most likely probably aren't going to happen. If they do happen, they're going to be pushed so far back where everything's going to be expedited. Are you, are you concerned about all these changes on the offensive line, all these potential changes on offense with, say, three new receivers and just building this offense going into the season? Yeah, I think we talked about this earlier today. He's got a built-in excuse now, doesn't he? 
freaking uh, Gase. He's going to, you know, we go in, we go into the season, oh, we had so many moving parts. We had to rebuild the offensive line. We had no offseason to do it. That's the excuse this year, right? So, I mean, listen, all the teams, every NFL team has to deal with the exact same situation. I know it's not on that level because they're replacing all these guys on the offensive line, but it's still a new season. There's brand new coaching staffs going in that aren't going to be able to use that excuse. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, <laughs> this is the big leagues, man. You got to go out and you got to perform. So they brought, so Jay, my, you know, they brought him back. They brought him back in the name of continuity, right? Like that was the whole reason we brought him back. So I mean, they'll be ahead of the game against some teams that brought in brand new coaching staffs and have to imply, you know, bring in a whole new system. So, I mean, I guess that's the only positive of bringing Gase back. You don't have to deal with that. But I guess nobody knew there was going to be a global pandemic. <laughs> I mean, that you couldn't use that as a reason to bring him back earlier. But I guess now it's not the worst thing in the world he's here. Better rather rather than some brand new coach. I don't know. You know, and the one th- one question you know, I have for you is, um, obviously, I, f- I was going to ask Tyrone this, but I forgot. What is it like there down in Florida with you right now? Cause I know, like, obviously, New York and New Jersey, we're all on lockdown here where, you know, it's just essential. The, you know, essential employees can go to work. Everybody else has got to stay home. What's it like there down in Florida? So, that's a good question. I mean, you know, it's a huge state. And, and up by, like, I've seen videos up by, like, Jacksonville of, like, these absolute morons hanging out on the beach. Like there was one beach that was open. So all these morons flock there and pack the beach. Cause it's like, Oh, we yep. can get out of the house. Finally. Oh, that drives me insane. But most of the state is, is really taking it seriously from what I've seen. I mean, I'm, I haven't gone too far away from where I live in, uh, in Boynton beach, but I can tell you this. Um, last week, you know, you could go to the stores and there would be tons of people there shopping and, and, uh, you know, getting their, all their supplies and everything. But, um, I've been spending a lot of time at my father's house and, uh, trying to help out, trying to help them. I don't want them going out cause he's older and, and, you know, do their shopping and stuff like that. I was at the store today, um, which I quite frankly would prefer not to be in at this point, but, um, and, and <laughs> the place was like empty, man. It's, it's really, I mean, you, you actually are starting to see some, uh, some food back on the shelves and everything now. I guess they're doing a better job of stocking it, but also people just don't want to leave their house right now. So, uh, yeah, you know, people are definitely scared. They're definitely, uh, I think, from at least around me, um, doing, the, doing the right thing, sheltering in place and not leaving unless they have to. So, uh, you know, I'm starting to, I'm starting to sense that um, even in places where that weren't taking it very seriously previously are now kind of understanding the, uh, the severity of the situation, and I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, I think that everyone not heeding that warning earlier and, you know, still going to spring breaks and stuff like that, um, so it certainly didn't help and, uh, you know, brought it back all over the country and, and spread to certain areas and stuff like that. Um, we got to be smart. I mean, this is not fun for anybody. It certainly is not fun for me. I have no work coming in right now. Zero. My, my, you know, I work for a, um, uh, uh, events company. There's no events, you know, and there's no sports magazine because there's no sports. So, um, I, I like to work and I like to, you know, to obviously go out and do things. I mean, this is really difficult, but, I don't want to see anyone die, and, and, you know, everyone, I think, you know, just stay home, relax, not jail. You know, you got TV, Internet, phone, hit up your friends and do, you know, do the right thing. Yeah, well said, man. Well, first of all, thank you for calling in, and thank you for your donation, too, man. I really appreciate it. Dude, you're doing an awesome thing. Anything I can ever do to support something that great, um, you know, and, and any, anybody, man, you know, look, nobody's, nobody's making money right now, so it's difficult to give. I, I totally get that. So if anybody you know, has any extra and can donate masks, food, whatever, um, you know, we're, we're all one people, man. It's, it's, uh, you know, we'll get through this, but a lot of people are going to have to help a lot of other people. We're seeing that with the nurses and doctors and everything, and everyone can do their small part, five bucks, 10 bucks, or even just a retweet, just so in case somebody that has five or 10 extra bucks can help out. Um, that's awesome. So, uh, I see everyone banding together and I love that. It's great. So if anyone has anything like that, that I can help, you know, I only have a huge following on, social media, but if you hit up my DMs on uh, NYSF Mag, I'm happy to put out any information for any fundraisers or anything like that. Small business, awesome, Jay, Thanks for calling, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Stay healthy. Once again, NYSFMag.com. And, Joe, that's the question I have for you, too. Like, we're, like, mm-hmm. obviously, New York, New Jersey, we're, we're struggling, man. I mean, we're, we've been on, um, we've been in, like, uh, probably a week and a half now where we had to be in the house, and it, we're pretty much... Mm-hmm. So there's a point now where they're closing down parks and it, everything's pretty much closed down now. What's it like out there in California? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, you have to, you know, also remember everyone knows I'm a, I'm a firefighter, so I'm a first, uh, <laughs> I'm a first responder, not just first rounder. I'm also an EMT, so my viewpoint on it is very different. Can't really talk about some of the things I'm seeing because of HIPAA laws, but I will tell you, listen, everybody, please quarantine. Please keep your ass at home. <laughs> There's no need, unless you're going out and really getting, you know, some of the things that you need. Please don't just be, like Jay said, there's people out there hanging out, trying to have parties and do it. This is serious. I don't know if some people know this or not. If you're listening and you think it's a joke, no, it's not a joke. It's serious. Please stay at home. Um, seeing some of the same things again, you know, they're doing shutdowns here and there, shutdown parks, stuff like that. Um, but this is serious. You know, a lot of people are really dealing with the effects of, of what this is bringing. So the best thing we can do is, like I said, practice your social distancing, stay at home, quarantine, and let things kind of work themselves out. Yeah, well said. That's the whole thing. It's like, you know, you know, not to go off football too much, but, like, I have two parents that are both mm -hmm. high risk. They're both older that have, yeah. you know, respiratory. Yeah. You know, so, so I'm like, listen, I'm not going nowhere near them. I'm dropping off food at their front door, and I'm looking at yeah. all these people, and I'm like, dude, like, this isn't about us necessarily. Like, we're, it's about, like, I'm worried about people infecting you know, it's like, like I said, just stay home. Like, you know, like my parents, I'm like, listen, don't I'll stay there. Like, walk in the yard and go back in the house. Like, just yeah, serious stuff. You see, like, uh, day by day, with all the deposit cases coming up and, and unfortunate death, all these things increasing. So you know, it's just like, and the only remedy mm -hmm. is stay home. It's obvious. Like, yeah. there is no, like, if, you, if you're if you willing to have, like, 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 10 minutes from my house, they had the, these guys on a bus on some freaking corona party. You guys are just a bunch of idiots. I mean, this isn't funny. Yeah, it's not cool. It's not. It's not something you post on social media. Like, look, I'm rebelling. You're risking all of us, and if not us, our family. Like, exactly. crazy, man. Like, this is not 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 the time to be the rock star. I'm cool. You know. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, again, you know, I, like I said, I'm on the front line, so I'm seeing a lot of things. You know, hospitals, the 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 patient load that they're having to deal with now is just astronomical. They're you know, trying to do what they can as well. But like you said, you got people out here partying on <laughs> buses and, like you said, rebelling. Listen, you can have it and not even know. It can be spreading around all over the place. You think you're rebelling. You're not. You're being, you're not being smart. <laughs> Let's just say that. You know, you're not being very smart. Quarantine, stay home, you know, keep it together. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, like you said, the like you said, you have two parents that are at high risk. There's other people, you know, as well that have uh, – you know, immune issues that are at high risk, any kind of, you know, anything else, any other medical issues you may have also puts you at high risk. Age puts you at high risk. So be smart about what you're doing out there, folks. There's no need for you to be out there partying or trying to go all these places thinking that it's cool or it's funny or it's not real. It is very real. Things are happening, and people that are on the front line, like myself, are trying our best to deal with these things. And we don't need, you know, you going out there and just doing something crazy, okay? Just relax. Stay at home, and everything will be all right. You're just working through stuff. Yeah, and it, as Jay said, if, if you guys any, have had a fundraiser, first responders or food banks, whatever it is, hit up our, hit up our social media accounts. We have no problem promoting any of that, too. We, have, we try our best to just actively promote things and get people in the right areas. So anything you guys have, send to our social media. Instagram is at TalkJetsRadio, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. We, we're pretty much everywhere. So hit us up. So nine two nine four seven seven two six five one. We're gonna to go to Matt in Philly. What's up, man? Time to talk. I know. Last time we talked, I was uh, getting crushed on this show about my uh, how I'm against Robbie Anderson coming back and free agency. I was nervous about offensive linemen. A lot's happened since, guys. So are you, you must be happy because Robbie's gone. We somewhat addressed the line. <laughs> well, I thought about what you guys said, and I still have a firm belief that with every offensive lineman free agency coming to us, there's another team on the other end that viewed that guy as replaceable. But I understand we need depth, and Joe Douglas did just that. I'm hoping, you know, one of them pans out. I still hope we get that left tackle at 11. And uh, with Robbie, I just, I just didn't view him as, I don't know, I just, I thought, <laughs> I thought he was, He's not injury prone, but he just he has a twelve year old frame. I was just worried he runs one route. He's never had a, over a thousand. He's never ever had a, a thousand yards receiving. We're gonna pay him thirteen, fourteen million dollars that he was asking for in the in the beginning. No chance. 
So I was happy yeah. we uh, ended up cashing in with Perriman. Um, I think he's got a lot yeah. to prove still, former first-round pick. We'll see what he, what he can do. Yeah, and I want to thank you for calling in. Look, at, you know, I, I hear what you were saying about Robbie. I was more worried about just the price. Uh, like you said, I, I thought that he was kind of a one-dimensional wide receiver as well, but the price is what I was worried about. Like you said, all you know, up into the teens, you don't want to pay him that much, but he's gone. You know what I'm saying? He's moved on. He's with the Panthers now. I wish him nothing but success there. Like you said, we brought in Perryman. We'll see, you know, what he can add to this offense. We don't necessarily know whether or not he will be an adequate replacement for Robbie, but he's a guy that can definitely bring something to the field. But I want to get your thoughts on this backup position that we just filled here at QB. What are your takes on David Fells being brought back and being the backup for Sam now at this point? To be honest, guys, like, I saw, I was at, I was in the stadium when we saw Simeon's leg get broken half last year, and I remember the the, the stadium just, just, like, we were getting text messages from our, our parents or friends at home saying, like, his leg is gone, like, Simeon's done. And then I was in Philadelphia when, um, I can't even tell you what his name was, the third stringer that played the Eagles last year. What was his name again? Luke Falk. Oh, uh, the Jets now. Falk. Luke Falk. Falk, yeah. I was Falk. there for that. Yeah. I was there for that. I mean, if someone's telling me he's a good backup, whatever, I'm happy. But I know if Sam goes down, this the whole system under Gase will fall apart no matter what. So it doesn't really mean much to me. Um, I guess I'm more concerned with, you know, you know, no more sports, so I'm really diving deep into mock drafts. I'm just really concerned that Douglas doesn't go offensive line at 11. I'm just praying every night that he does. I'm not really too concerned about backups. Because so, if so we get a left tackle, your, we don't need a backup. <laughs> but what is, so what is your assessment going to the draft? Are you comfortable with how they're handling things? Are they being kind of frugal? Or do you think this is part of the plan looking forward to 2021? I, I like how Douglas is doing one- or two-year deals. I, I feel like part of that is that he just is not confident that Gase will be here for more than two years. Like, all these contracts are one and two years. Gase has a terrible season next year. We, he does what he did this year, and he's gone. Now we reset again. Yeah, see, I don't, and Joey Douglas got see, but Matt, Here's my – I'm going to play devil's advocate with you, and the complete opposite. I think this year for Adam Gase is – to me, like last year was he, was he was coaching guys that weren't his guys because the Cagney didn't give him the guys he wanted. So he had, a, he had a deal with last year. This year they're weeding out the guys he wants. It's another year that he can say, hey, man, these are my guys. We're still in our program, and next year will be easier to assess. I think this is the washing room. I really do. I think the way they're handling things is kind of like we're cleaning up contracts, we're cleaning up players we didn't want, we're going to get all like band-aids and stop gaps, and next year is the splash. So what do you expect to get next year? Next year you have $100 million in cap space. You're going to have another probably top 10 pick, and then they're going to make all their splashes and bring in all kinds of talent. Uh, I feel like that happens. that's what we say every off season now. It's like every off season we have all this money, all these free agents, but it just never it never clicks as a death fan. Well, huh? look, look, what happens? All these one year contracts. These guys are all be gone. Henry Anderson will be gone. Le'Veon Bell will be gone. Quincy Miller is going to be gone. All that you're going to yeah. get a hundred million dollars in cash, but it's easy. So what are you going to do? We're going we're to build through the draft, quote unquote, with from this year, a top ten pick next year. And the hundred million dollars in cash space. That's how you're rebuilding this team. To me, this is a wash year. This is how this is how they're handling it, man. It really does. Ooh, yeah. I feel like I'm listening to Let's Talk Jets in 2017. If you just told me that, it's like it's like every two <laughs> years it's happening. So? You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I, I no, I understand what you're saying. I this, this is what this is the life cycle of a Jets fan. Like we get all excited, we got all this money. You know, all the Jet beat writers and you know Caparosos of the world are are tweeting that we have all this money and that we have this draft and it ends up just, you know, we, we end up signing Jermaine Johnson's and drafting Nathan Shepard's. You know what I mean? So why do I get excited? I don't know. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Look, and, and, and listen, I hear you. I'm, I'm, I, I can see where Tyson is coming from. I'm hoping, uh, you know, the, the way that it's looking, it, it is kind of leaning towards it being a watch here because of all these one-year contracts and then that cap next year. But, man, you you got you to gotta do something to surround Sam with some weapons soon. Because if you're thinking, hey, one year and then we'll see what's going on is, is all right, man, that's just, 
I don't know what to say about that. And that's why I want to go back to you and ask you, at what point in the draft, if you're taking a left tackle in the first round, when are you giving Sam a wide receiver? When are you taking that? Is it a second? Is it a third? What are you doing to kind of help Sam this year? And how many wide receivers would you take in this draft as well? Before I uh, answer this question, great question. Before I answer it, I just want to say that I'm trying to take a different approach to this year and this offseason because last season I just got so built up for it to all end and just crash down in the first two games of the season. So I'm trying to take that glasses half empty approach to the Jets and not expect much. And maybe I won't be let down that roller coaster like we always do. To answer your question, I think you guys asked me, what do I think about the backup quarterback? I shouldn't have to think about a backup quarterback if we have that franchise left tackle. We get a left tackle at 11, and I can, I can calmly say, you know what, he could be like a Debrickishaw Ferguson, play 10 years, and he's, Sam, he's in Sam's career, he's protecting Sam's blind side for the rest of his career. I mean, that just gives me such a peace of mind. As a, court, and as a quarterback, you don't think you're going to get killed every play. I get that we want to give him a, a great weapon, but can we get somebody like maybe in the second round? All I hear is how deep the receivers are in this league. I feel like it's more of a risk at 11 to draft the receiver and end up with, uh, I don't know, that guy, um, a Darius Hayward Bay, who ended up being a bust. And instead, we get the Brookishaw Ferguson for the next 10 years protecting our number one asset. That's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I agree with you. You want to protect your quarterback and everything else. But, I mean, I also think in this day and age in the NFL, you need to have a very good backup. Like, I think that's just the way the NFL is. You can't mail in Absolutely. games like the Jets did last year. Like, they mailed in three games last year saying, you know what, our quarterback went down, we're going to play Luke Falk, who wasn't even an NFL quarterback, and we're just going to lose three games because we just don't care. Like, you have money, and all these other backups are out there. Why not bring in a Matt Moore or bring in somebody else? I mean, I mean, people keep mentioning Joe Flacco, whatever, but, like, to just say, hey, we're going to take David Fales, a guy that's done nothing in the NFL, so Sam Dahl gets banged up, we're going to lose because our quarterback blows? That's just poor roster management, man. It's just like, it's just, I, I don't get it. I, I really don't understand that mindset with, with this organization. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. It would be nice to have a, like, we were excited about Simeon. I was excited about Simeon playing the Browns last year. I was like, you know what, maybe we can win. I think the spread was like, it wasn't crazy. The spread wasn't crazy going into that Monday night game. I was like, maybe Simeon can do it. And I agree with you, but I also agree. I also think if the Jets were to get like a Flacco, or let's say they somehow signed Jameis Winston as their backup, just hypothetically, the fans, if Sam Darnold makes two bad throws, you'll hear some fans turn on him. And that's just how the Jets you culture is, yeah, unfortunately. But, yeah, but see, I don't think... Yeah, but see, no, I'm not worried about a win. But see, just, but yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah, but if you just say, just say for the, you for Flacco, so, or just say Matt Moore. Matt Moore is probably more. He's, a, he's an Adam Gase guy, whatever else. He played in the system. He's won games. So like, if you just say the Jets are seven nine or eight and eight, whatever, and you're one game from making the playoffs, and Sam's banged up, do you want to say, oh well, I'm not gonna make the playoffs? We don't have a backup quarterback. That's just called preparation. It's called planning to win, preparing to win, having your team and every fact that always ready to win a game. And to just say, hey, you know what, we're going to take that chance. When you have the money to pay for a guy to back a quarterback, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's like having a backup for Le'Veon Bell. You should have one. Having a backup for whoever you were, like, you should have a good roster and not mail in the position. Like, to me, it's, like, you know, I don't know. Like, I just, to me, it's something that just annoys the hell out of me. And I, I hate the way they handled it last year. Last year was a complete joke when you had Josh Johnson and you had, what's it, what's it the guy Brock Osweiler, all these guys out there that were serviceable backups, we didn't pursue any of them. We just lost games after games. Just think about the games Luke Falk won. You win one of those games, you're in a playoff run. Like, you're back in it. You're, yeah. you're there. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean but that, if, even if you look it's around just, the league, it's just, it's even if you – yeah, even if you look around the league, when you talk about winning with backup quarterbacks, you can see the impact of having a solid backup quarterback. Look at the Eagles Super Bowl run. They did that with a backup quarterback. Yeah. If they had had some bum, somebody that, you know – Hey, we'll just sign this guy to the roster. Yeah, he's you know picked up the ball once or twice. They don't go on that run. You know what I'm saying? They had a guy that could stand in there adequately. Of course, they had a great offensive uh, genius as well in, in Dougie P. But he also had a guy in Folk that went out there and um, went out there and, and did his thing. I mean, Foles. He went out there and he did his thing. You know, so you got to have an adequate backup out there if you can. You know, they're very important in this league, especially, again, when, hey, if a guy goes down, you don't want to start mailing in games because those count down the stretch. We saw it. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, it's more important for other teams in the league because we're not usually in that spot. If we were ever in that spot and we needed one game to win, I was hoping Joey Douglas would call, like, Eli but, off the couch or something, you know, like yeah, but, right but, then and But, there. now, shouldn't we have higher standards, though? Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm thinking, take a, take a who's your cow? But we don't really do, like, act like everybody else. Why don't we have higher standards for our team? Like, we want to be like the other teams. Like, if I Dev. It's a talented roster. Like, be, like, have a mindset. Like, we will have less. We're not a, like mailing the games like we did last year. Like, we should just expect from this team. They have the money to spend. This isn't rocket science. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing, but I just think that it's like a very down the line problem with this team. Like, okay, we're being very frugal with paying a backup quarterback. You know, we had great – it was great when McCown was there. You know, it was, it was great. We had a guy that was schooling Sam, and also he could win a couple games. We saw him do it before Sam got there. So, yeah, that would be ideal. Maybe – I don't know. I'm not a scout. Maybe Douglas saw something in this guy. I, I can't really give you a great answer. I just um, – I saw the Giants. They, didn't they get Colt McCoy? I mean, like Colt McCoy, right? Let's say Daniel Jones goes down, McCoy comes in, wins the game for the Giants. You don't think Giant fans are going to say, maybe McCoy can be the guy? It's just how New York is. It's not like how me and you guys are, but that's just how it is. Yep. No, it's fair enough. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good times, man. Matt, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for uh, giving me uh, some good content during this quarantine. Stay healthy and safe, guys, and uh, – Go Jets. Hopefully we get that left tackle for the future. You too, man. Stay safe. Thank you. Yeah, that's interesting, Joe. It's interesting. I guess, you know, it's, mm-hmm. like I, I just had different expectations for this team. Like, I just, you want to see certain things and the way certain things are handled. And last year, which we questioned him, when it happened last year, we questioned it. Talking about it. People said, oh, no, this is his first year. He's learned to learn. They're doing some of the same things right now. Yeah, yeah, I want to thank the last caller for calling in. He was great. Yeah, you know, you would hope that things would kind of change a little bit. But, again, I think that this is a guy that Adam Gaze covered. So, hey, bring him back, bring him in. But when there's so many other guys out there that we can bring in that have had quality starts that we've seen go out there and be able to put, you know, a couple stretches, a couple wins together, a couple solid games together while – their starters have been out, you know, have been able to be adequate backups. You start to wonder, hey, why don't we go after those guys? Or why haven't we grabbed that guy and brought him in? So, you know, we'll see how it continues to play out. Hopefully they snatch somebody else up and bring him in. But, man, just going in there with fails, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Yeah, and look, they can make a move and get somebody down the line. You draft after draft. But as of right now, you can't stand out of what you have. So we're going to go to mm-hmm. Andrew and Arizona. Hi guys, thanks for taking my call. Hey, thank you for calling. Dude, how are things out in Arizona? Um, I, I live in an area called Scottsdale. Uh, we've had about 100 cases here, and uh, uh, unfortunately we, we've had some uh, individuals get even sicker than that. Um, so it, it's getting kind of bad. I know there's a restriction starting this evening or tomorrow morning. Uh, and there's really a lot of limitations here in the West Coast or Southwest uh, of where we can go. Uh, obviously, uh, if you need a pharmacy, uh, you can go that route. If you need to get some groceries, you can certainly do that. And I think they have some uh, exercise options where you can go out, take a walk, uh, and quickly get back home. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite uh, frightful out here. Uh, but we are doing our best, staying home, and uh, just kind of uh, hoping, uh, hoping for the best in the near future uh, for us and for everybody else. Yeah, well said. We're all in the same boat too, man. Jersey. We're all on. You know, there's not much we can do. All the restaurant, everything pretty much goes down at this point. So we're just like food stores and gas stations and stuff like that. Every food establishment is takeout only, and parks are closed. So we're all in the same boat, man. So. Anyway, to change up a little bit, what are your thoughts on free agency, man, the way Joe Douglas is handling things? Yeah, uh, good question. Thanks, Tyson. Uh, I, I, I don't want to sound like a downer. <laughs> you know, I, I've called into the show the last couple of weeks, and we've discussed a few things. Uh, I'm a very, very big 
uh, advocate of the offensive line for any football team. Uh, I'm a New York Jets fan, and I really do feel that it's the offensive line other than the quarterback that really helps run the offense. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you look back in 2006, uh, we had a great draft with uh, Ferguson and Mangold, and they really kind of helped solidify that offensive line. Uh, even going back to 98 or the teams of 2009 and 2010, we had some very, very good quality offensive linemen that really gave the quarterback a little bit more time uh, to, to get to their receivers uh, or maybe hand off the football and maybe open up some holes for the team offensively. So uh, going back to the offensive line, I, I'm a little bit disappointed that um, some of the acquisitions that we've made aren't quite um, the type of quality, if you will, uh, that I feel the Jets should have to help protect Sam uh, short-term and going long-term. Uh, and that's why I, I'm a big component of having that 11th pick. And if we can get a top four uh, OT or left tackle that the front office deems suitable for the next 10 years to help protect Sam and maybe open up some holes on that left side, uh, I, I really like to see that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to thank you for calling in. Look, I, I hear you, and I'm, I'm kind of right there with you at this point. Unless he makes a trade for Trent Williams, I don't know how you could say, hey, we shouldn't take a left tackle in the first round. You know, because we've seen when you have a big hole like that there, we've seen, you know, Sam get completely get destroyed week after week going against different teams. But then the question opens up, okay, if you're taking a left tackle in the first round, well, where are you getting your pass catchers from? Where are you getting those weapons from? And how would you handle the wide receiver position in the draft? Are you taking more than one? Are you taking, you know, two? What are you doing? Yeah, that's a great question, Joe. So um, I like to take Buffalo as, uh, well, as an example, if you will, or a comparable. Uh, uh, Brandon Dean out there, I really, really like the way he kind of positioned himself and the way he's building the team. You know, just last year, uh, he really revamped that, that entire offensive line, taking five different uh, individuals. And I think that really helped kickstart uh, of the success that Buffalo had last year. Uh, now I think he's going into a direction now where he's going to get uh, his quarterback, uh, Allen, uh, some, some pieces to the puzzle in terms of getting some you know, playmakers uh, to help throw the ball to. And let's remember one thing. When, when our GM, when, when Joe Douglas first had his first interview with the draft, one of the first things he said was, this team needs playmakers. And that really is an understatement because we sure do need those. And we need them on the offensive line. But without getting the offensive line fixed, maybe let's say the first round and maybe a piece in the third round and maybe another piece later on in the round, uh, I don't think you're going to give t uh, Sam Darnold the time or those holes uh, for the running backs to get through. Uh, so I think we need to double dip, maybe even triple tip on the, on the offensive line, left tackle, center. I'm not sure if McGovern is, uh, is really the answer to this. Maybe short term he is, but – looking and reading and doing some research on him, he's a little bit above average in terms of pass protection. It doesn't seem like he can really open up holes that much. And if you go to the rest of the guys that were signed, it doesn't seem like they're a good fit either in terms of getting Sam that extra protection. So finding those offensive line, if, if the front office deems suitable, you take two or three of them in this year's draft, and you take two wide receivers. You know, uh, you guys mentioned earlier about needing a one and a two because we already have a three. I agree with that. You might be able to find them. I don't know. You might get something out of Doxon. I don't know. Uh, you might get something out of Perryman. Uh, I mean, these are former first-round picks, so they've got some pedigree to them. So I'm sorry if I'm all over the place here, but my, my bottom line is we really need the offensive line first and then you get your pieces to help Sam Darnold. Because if you don't give him time, it's just not going to happen. Well, yeah, the offensive line is your foundation, man. Without that, you can't really do much. you got to have, like, 
look what Sanchez was, was successful. It was off the line was pulling everybody. Then you could run the ball, you could pass the ball, you could do whatever you want. So uh, I'm not arguing. I'm, listen, so are you are you thinking this is more of a plan for next year than rather than winning this year, right? Yeah, that, that's a great question, uh, Tyson. I, I think because of the amount of one-year contracts that uh, Joe Douglas has has provided to these players uh, in, in free agency, I, I think it's a no-brainer. I, I think there's definitely some clues there where he's telling them uh, or telling the team or the organization, uh, maybe even the coach, he's saying, hey, guys, we're really building up for next year instead of this year. Let's remember, this team was basically handed to him from the last regime. So he has to, if you really think about it, he really has to start over again. And he has to build it one step at a time. And he needs extra funds for next year's class to be able to build it the way he wants to build it while going into the draft this year and next year and getting those extra pieces. No, it's, uh, dude, I completely agree with you. I could, this is a phenomenal call, man. Angel, thank you so much for calling in, man. Be safe out there. Okay, thank you for uh, thank you for taking my call, guys, and please be safe. Absolutely, man. Have a good night. No, Joe, that was that was a phenomenal call, man. And it's so interesting that everybody yeah. kind of is has the same kind of concerns, same kind of opinions, and you're slowly but surely seeing how the team, what we had last year, what it, you know. I mean, I don't want to go back into how when Joe Douglas was hired because we've already beaten that to death, but you kind of see what oh, last year really was, how they're handling this year, and what we are. Like, obviously they want to win this year. They're going to try. They're going to sell us all this stuff, but you can see the approach, man, and you can see how pragmatic and how frugal he's being. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I, I can, you kind of can see what this, is, what this is. Like, I'd like to see him make a splash and go out and get Trent Williams or go get some more mm-hmm. key player and make that big move, but based on what they're doing, man, I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, I, I don't want to thank the last caller for calling in. He was phenomenal. I, don't, I mean, the way he's handled it so far, you got to think that he's not going to do that, you know. But again, you also got to look at some of the issues that we had here. He's handed, <laughs> handed this team that was terrible with a lot of bad contracts. You've been drafting horribly for years under McCagney. This is, you know, the outcome of it, especially when you're also being bad at free agency, giving away crazy contracts. Guys like, you know, Tremaine Johnson making as much money as he is. We just got done talking about, um, uh, Quincy and Numa, look at his contract. How he's like, he has injury guarantees. That guy's one of the most injured players on the team. It's almost like you almost can't get rid of him unless you want to pay him a, you know, quite a bit as well. So, you know, it, it is what it is. There's some moves again that could still be made, but it's looking like he's just going to try to load up and then, you know, compete this year and then see what we can do next year. Hopefully, you know, maybe. You know, he, he, he goes big in free agency next year. That's what I'm hoping, that he gets a couple guys in here in spots that are really void of talent, and then we continue to boost, and then he can, you know, go into the draft and find some more guys, and then we can compete at least, you know, by next year. So, but again, there's still more moves that can be made in this draft, too. There's still some trades that he can swing in this draft as well that could really give us a push, but we'll see what happens. All right, 29477 well, now, the last time this guy called in, things got a little chaotic here. I mean, he's usually a great caller, and we usually have a lot of fun, but the debates heated up pretty quickly. There's some animosity, and our boy Shaq, he, it was, it's, I don't know what happened, man. So we're going to bring back Shaq on, see, but, you know, new night, new approach. What's up, man? <laughs> what I do? What I do? What happened? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good, How you bro? doing? What's, what's good, man? <laughs> I hope you guys are safe. You know, I hope everything's good. You know, I I, I might bring up the debate again. See, I, I missed track of time calling earlier because I want to really hear what everybody really thinks was going on right now. I want to really believe, I want to really hear what people are thinking this team is going to be next year. Because I feel like people are sipping the Kool-Aid that green Kool-Aid that you, that you talk about, Tyson. And I really feel like people think we're going to win 11 or 12 games. I really believe it. And they think George Fent is the answer. Part of the answer. And I really feel that way. It is really bothering me because Prime Time put this out. And I told him, I said, if he would have got Trent Williams and uh, Jack Conklin, and we just build through the draft and everything, I feel like 
we can we could have you know we can make some noise, you know, because with those two guys, with those two guys with Conor McGovern, it didn't even matter who our guards was. I would have been fine with Grant, Greg Van Broten and fine with Alex Lewis. That would have been a perfect O line for me. I feel like that would have been enough to get us some points on the board. But guys are happy about George Fan. And we're getting guys like right now Joe, Joe Douglas is taking the I'm 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 I don't want to say this, but the John Nizdick approach. But right now yep. he's hoping and praying that he just you know, he's learning because back in Philly in, in, in Baltimore he don't have Ozzy Newsom. He don't have those guys that he had back then. He's by himself for the first time in his career. Well his GM career or whatever it is he's doing. And, you know, Right now, he's taking that cheap approach. I don't like it, honestly. I don't like it because I'm, I'm trying to get some games on the belt. I want to come into the season expecting to win more than seven games this year. I don't think we're going to win more than eight games this year. I'm being honest. Well, Shaq, you know, do you guys, see, the other thing is, and, dude, I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. And I say the same thing. And everybody keeps calling me a troll, and I'm a negative fan, and I, I don't know what I'm talking about. And what we're doing is, Right now, Joe Douglas, he's getting, he's getting the benefit of the doubt because he's new and he hasn't done anything else. So everything he does mm-hmm. is great because he doesn't have a resume. He's done nothing else. I mean, we'll forget the Ryan Khalil stuff. We'll forget all the other things, he, whatever happened last year. But now it's like, oh, he's getting great value, great value, great value. There's, all, there's, there's two sides to great value. Either you're getting great value or the person's not worth it. They're not a starting player. They're not starting caliber. Mm-hmm. And that's the concern I have. Mm-hmm. Like, you're... you're these are you could, you, these could be stopgap guys or band-aid guys or journeymen that you're just trying to hold the fort tolls next year. And to do that with your offensive line is super risky. We've seen this before. So I'm not overly – I mean, I would rather, you know, I'm, I'm not excited about it. A lot of one-year deals, a lot of, you know, low-risk, potentially high-reward things. But it's, it's risky, man. And I'm not, I'm not buying it. I'm more of like a – I don't want to prove it to me. I'm not going to give the guy all kinds of accolades. When you look at outside analysts, they all have their concerns. They're kind of questioning what the Jets are doing a little bit, saying, listen, you're cheaping out on your most important spots on your team. The offensive. So, Joe, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> now, first off, I want, I want to thank Shaq for calling in. Look, I, I'm, I'm right there as well. You know, there's some, there's some concerns I talked about. You know, going into free agency, I talked about wanting Jack Conklin and making that trade for Trent Williams and various other things to help better this offense and better this football team as a whole. And, you know, outside of the kind of McGovern kind of move, I just kind of thought, hey, we kind of missed the mark here or there. George Fant, not necessarily a big fan of that, especially if we're talking about starting him at left tackle. And then you're looking at your right tackle spot and you're saying, Chuma starting at right tackle again? We... We saw that kind of go up and down. So it's like, well, you know, what's going on here? Because, again, if we go into this season and this offensive line is still bad at your, at your edge position, at your tackle position there, then, you know, what did you really do? And even looking at this line, I mean, can you say that they're much better than next year or than last year, excuse me? Eh, we'll see, but I know a lot of people there still question that. Did you get better there? You know, so I don't know, man. But for me, I, I'm just worried about, getting Sam guys to catch the ball. That's what I'm worried about, you know, being addressed in, in this draft. And when you look at it, and this is my question for Shaq, is that when you look at the first round, dude, there are some studs, like some guys that can step in and immediately give you production, you know, according to analysts. You look at what they've done already, guys that we really think, hey, can have a big impact their first year, but we're kind of saddled, especially if we don't make a trade for Trent Williams, if we go into this draft still needing a left tackle, could you even make an argument to take a wide receiver over a left tackle at this point, Shaq, looking the way that we look offensively? Um, no. Honestly, I feel like if a left tackle is on the board, like Makai Beckton or maybe Josh Jones, I feel like you should take them. Uh, but if not, you know, the obvious is C.D. Lamb. Jerry Judy, you know, I'm, I'm not going. I, I, I'm not buying the corner and, and, and the pass rusher thing. I'm not buying that. I'm not doing that. I don't want that to happen. I'm tired of seeing defensive players. I don't really like the pass rushers in this class as much. 
to be picked at 11. But I feel like those should be addressed around the second and later rounds, second and after rounds. The first round, we got to focus on the offense. Because right now, I feel like we're giving Adam Gaze more excuses because, you know, if this offense don't work out, then that's more excuses for him because he don't have the talent. Now, see, if, if he would have had, if, if, if we would have just went with the primetime approach or, you know, the Joe approach or, you know, the obvious approach, getting Trent Williams, paying for Jack Conklin, shoot, where else is the money going? The money is going nowhere else but stopgap players. And you only get stopgap players when you have a Super Bowl team. We don't have a Super Bowl team. We have, uh, a, you know, I'm not going to say terrible, but a, a between, you know, a middle pack team. Like th- these, these signs that he's getting is is not going to put us over the hump. I'm sorry, especially if the coaching is mediocre at best. You can't do that, you know. Well, so, I mean, just be, you look at it like just the way I look at it like this. Just it's very simple. You look at it. We we came into this off season saying the number one priority, the undisputed priority, we got to fix the offense. It was the worst in the NFL last year, and it wasn't even close. It was horrific. And we are now, what, in the second stage, late third stage of free agency, and is our offense significantly better? We don't even know. I can't even say it's necessarily upgraded. <laughs> Perriman and Robbie Anderson, I have no idea. The offensive line, I'm not really sure what that. I mean, you could say McGovern is a step up. Other than that, it's kind of unknowns and question marks. Can they stay healthy? Can they start? Can they play together? Is the offense better going into April 1st? I don't. I can't say it is. It looks the same to me. I'm not going to lie to you. The only thing that's going to, the only thing that I could, that I could hope for, is right now we get Trent Williams, and we try to, you know, get C.D. Lamb or, you know, Jerry Judy. You're one of those guys. That's all. That's all I'm hoping right now, because right now I see no improvements. I see, I, I see, John Nizik written all over again. But I'm not going to do that. But people, think, but people think Joe Douglas has been wow. great. So I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I'm just being honest. I, I, wow. You know, people think you know he's doing great. It took him a whole month to find a damn kicker. That's all I'm saying. I, but you know, I'm going to leave that alone. That you know, that's another subject for another day. Let's just hope that he's doing well and, and we improve or, or you know, do something. Do something. Uh, I'm, I'm the Jadavian Clowney one. Uh, oh God! Oh God! Oh my God! I'll pass on that well, one. I'll pass on that. Oh. <laughs> Can we improve? We don't improve. We don't improve, <laughs> man. Thanks for calling, man. What are you <laughs> Stay safe, man. Thanks for calling it. We appreciate it. Stay <laughs> safe, man. God dang. <laughs> Joe, oh, Joe, this is hysterical. It's so funny because, like, I know. I already know the feedback for tomorrow. I already know. So if you want to tweet me, just tweet me now. I'm already ready for it. Those guys are so freaking negative. It's always doom and gloom. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. You guys don't know how good Joe Douglas is. We're just going to draft all the answers. Just save your ten of tweets now. I get it. But it was interesting to see Shaq say the same thing, Joe. <laughs> yeah, first off, I want to thank Shaq for calling in. You know, look, I, I, it, it's just there's concerns there. You know, and I understand, you know, some are kind of glossing over or looking over these concerns, and they just think, hey, we're just going to, you know, do whatever we've got to do. We're going to draft all these, all these needs and everything. But, dude, there's just – so much going on and things that we could have done that we didn't do that would have instantly gave, given us a boost and would have really given us flexibility to draft a certain way that, you know, that this team needs. You know, if you, again, there's still a trade that could be made for Trent Williams, but if you make that dude, that really gives us so much flexibility in the first, not just to take a wide receiver, but to possibly move down maybe a spot or two, get a pick and still take a wide receiver. There's, there's so many outcomes that could come from that. So, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not hopping off the Joe Douglas bandwagon. I'm not saying fire him. I'm not saying anything. I'm not. I'm damn sure not calling him John Isaac. I'm not doing that. But uh, you know, I'm still waiting and seeing. But I just think could have been done that. You know, work kind of weren't done. So we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, there's some interesting takes here, man. It, it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's I can I can already know the feedback, dude. I can already because like I just it takes like a little while for people to get like to upload on wherever they listen to it at. Like we're all over the place, like mm-hmm. YouTube and iTunes, all, and I I know when it hits because all of a sudden the attacking starts. You guys, we're not going to tune in anymore because all you guys do is find problems with the team and this and that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Well, did, did I miss? Did I miss all these winning seasons and all these trophies that we've had and all these marquee moves that we made? Did I miss any of these things? But I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> well, I still have. Well, you know, I had concerns coming into the off season. I had the same freaking concerns today, except for center. Other than yeah. that, I'm still concerned. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah, supposed well, to lie, Joe? Like, what am I supposed to do? Well, you know, I, I think, again, I think a lot of people have, you know, green glasses on. But the, the deal is, is look, we, we sit back, we're fans of the team just like everybody else. And we analyze this team. And, and looking at it, when you look at the issues, I remember talking about the offensive line going into the season last season and being told I was negative. <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember literally going to free agency and screaming, listen, we need to address this offensive line now and being told to shut up because we, we signed C.J. Mosley and we got Le'Veon Bell. Joe, you being negative, stop talking about that. The offensive line is going to be fine. And we saw all year that it was anything but fine. So, you know, when you see this thing and then you say, okay, we, we, there's these guys out here that we can bring in that will instantly give us some production there, boost the, the level of play, but you're coming out of that with George Fant, there's definitely going to be some questions. So, you know, there, there's questions there. I don't think anybody's necessarily giving up on the season, but it's just like, you know, he's, he's got to, you know, make some moves coming up. And, there, again, there's still time, still things you can do, but, man, when you miss out on guys like Conklin, when you miss out on other guys that were out there, too, that could really boost the offense, you got to wonder. No, it's fair. Like I said, like, and our whole thing is to be objective and to, you know, to create debate and discussions and everything else. And if, I mean, I don't know, that's what we try to do. And if you don't like it, I don't know what to say. But we're going to go to Mr. Steve. Happy belated birthday, man. Hey, guys. Thank you very much. How you doing tonight, man? All right? Doing all right, you know, still staying indoors, you know, from the uh, from the virus, you know. Everybody's all got to stay quarantined. Yeah, that's, that's, unfortunately, man, that is the case. So that's what we have to do is stay inside, be safe, take care of everybody else when you can. Um, what are your thoughts on David Fales coming in as, right now, the backup quarterback? I mean, you can, you can honestly understand it because he knows Adam Gates' system. I mean, you know, I mean, we didn't really get to see – too much of him, but I mean, we don't know what would happen if Sam would have to go out again. I mean, we, I mean, we saw what happened last year. We had to watch Luke Falk play. It's just, it's just the thing is like it just worries me if Sam ever gets hurt again. That's definitely a concern. I mean, do you do you think they'll try to go for somebody like Flacco or Matt Moore? Or do you think this is their final move? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they try to go after at least another, at least another quarterback in the free agent market. But I mean, if they can get him at a really good, good cheap deal, I mean, I mean, we'll see. But at the same time, you know, I just don't know if I would see David fail though. Yeah, and I want to thank you for calling in, Steve. You're already bringing the heat. I want to get your thoughts on this because a guy that got uh, let go today still kind of floating out around there from the last that I heard. Drake Kirkpatrick, do you think the Jets should bring him in at all? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, if they get him at a reasonable price, yes. I mean, because you know the Bengals let him go. I mean, we de- we definitely need that that secondary help. I know he could definitely be a really good number one or number two corner. So, I mean, we need we need secondary help at the corner position. Okay, and who who's on your wish list going forward? And any guys you want to try to get signed before the draft? Or do you think the Jets are going to be quiet now? I really am hoping that the Jets do go after Trent Williams because the thing was I wanted to get a chance to talk about like our chances for the draft. Here is the thing: if the Jets do not go after Trent Williams before this draft, and if and if and if he isn't there then they got to go if he is available, the guy from Louisville, the really big left tackle. But, I, but if Trent Williams, if we get Trent Williams in, a, in, that, in, that, in a trade with the Redskins, if we get him, we got to go after a wide receiver, one of those three receivers. And I'm a really, really big fan of Jerry Judy. 
Well, yeah, I think that's, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Dude. If they get a left tackle before the draft, they can go for a wide receiver and, and address it there. But um, what are you willing to give up for Trent? I mean, Trent Williams, it seems like the market, he's playing the media game and the Redskins are kind of in a tough spot where the market could come down. Would you be willing to give up a second rounder or are you going to stay with the third rounder? See, here's the thing. If Well, wh- how would you feel if we had to give up because the Jets have two third-round picks for this upcoming mm-hmm. draft, would you give up two th- the ball third round to get to get Trent Williams? That's my answer. Absolutely not. Wow. What about you, Joe? Well, you, you know, uh, look, I, I hear where Steve is coming from. I, I, I understand the urgency in his voice. I hear it, but I, I would look to maybe give up. I mean, maybe a third and a fourth. I think that that would be. I would look to give that up. I wouldn't have an issue with that, or you know, a third and something later than that. But I, I, I don't necessarily think that two thirds, unless they, unless they were trading something or giving us some type of capital back as well. Maybe that that could be adequate, depending on what you're getting back. But the two thirds just for him, eh, I don't know if I would do that. But you know, it, it is what it is. But getting him, but also Steve, he's also looking for a little bit of an extension as well. What is the max that you would pay him? Thirteen million, fourteen million a season? Would you give him that? That that honestly sounds reasonable. Thirteen, fourteen is is reasonable to give him. Well, you're just in a reasonable mood, see. So, <laughs> what are, what are your thoughts on uh, the middle linebacker position where we have four guys now? So it's like they have C.J. Mosley's former running partner in Baltimore. They have Burgess, they have Hewitt, and they have Williamson. What do you think happens there? You know, here's the thing. Unfortunately, and and I know Joe is probably not going to like me for this, if Avery Williamson shows that he is still not capable of moving around or coming off of that torn ACL, and if he is not healthy enough, that and the thing is, if the Jets do let him go, the Jets do actually get $6.5 million back in their cap space. Honestly, yeah. I, I love I love Avery Williamson. I think he's done a lot of good things for the Jets, but I think it would be time to move on from him. I mean, and the other guy who we brought in from Baltimore, I mean, he, him and C.J. Mosley definitely had a really good chemistry together when they played in mm-hmm. B-more. I would love to see that chemistry here with the Jets. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, you know, look, I, I hear you there. Like I said, I've been a big advocate for Avery Williamson here on this show. I think that if he does come back and he's healthy, we should definitely keep him around. But I could see the Jets saying, hey, this guy is not moving like he should. It doesn't look like he's really coming back from that, or he won't be coming back from that the same way that we, you know, would like to see him come back. He probably is not going to give us much production. I could see that if he's not, they they would move on from him. But, again, I, I think he'll be fine. The, you know, the, the, the medical, uh, you know, stuff that we have today is crazy. I see players, you know, get all types of injuries and come right back from them like it's no issue. So I, I think he'll be all right. But I kind of want to, you know, go to the to the look at the defense right now with all these one-year deals there here, uh, uh, Steve. What are your thoughts on how the Jets are going to handle that next year? Do you think they're just kind of loading up and then next year – you know, we'll see them with a lot of cap space kind of attack the market and really fill those spots? Well, the way of how I've seen it, and this is actually something I've been waiting to tell you guys, and I think other fans, fans, I think what I think is what's really saying about this, I think what Joe Douglas' message is to these players of giving them one-year deals instead of, like, long-term deals, I think Joe Douglas is basically sending a message to these players that you need to prove to me that that I do deserve to give you a long term deal. You got to show it. And, I mean, that's how I think. But but I mean, I know if if let's say if we going into next year with a lot of cap space, I know the NFL is going to make more money. Teams are going to make more money. I mean, I just got to see what happens, Joe. That's what you got to do, Steve. Um, thank you for calling, man. We appreciate it. What did you do for your birthday? Anything? Hey. Did you get any cool presents? Yeah, yeah, I mean, my mom got me a new Jets t-shirt. There you go. Okay. That's never okay. A bad thing. There you go. Yeah. 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 By the way, one thing I got to say is 
a little bit ticked off with Mr. Tyrone over there down in D.C. for him calling me out uh -oh. earlier on the show. Calling uh -oh. me out uh -oh. like that. Oh, we got, we got show uh, beat, hey, My message is to Tyrone. Oh, no. Listen, I love you, man, but listen, listen, you ever want to try to call me out again? How about, you, how about one of these days we meet at a tailgate, you come to me face to face, and we can talk one on one? Oh, Steve, no I'm gonna tell you right now. I, 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 Steve, <laughs> oh, I, I, I think you're. I think you're a great dude. Oh. Tyrone is probably four four times the size of you, man. The guy is a, he's a beast. He he picked me up and tossed a red oh. doll with last time I saw him. So we'll just keep it friendly well, on the radio. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, hey, I'm just messing yeah. around with him. Them. Yeah, that, that, yeah that, 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 now you're messing around. It's all jokes, man. It's all jokes, man. It's all jokes. No, he, he was he was joking. You know, Steve Steve's a good guy. I knew that he was joking the entire time. You know, Steve's working on his stand up comedy thing. I get it. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to diversify himself. That was all jokes. He was not serious. I think what he really was trying to say is that, hey, look. I hope to meet you one day at a tailgate, and we can sit down and talk face to face. You no, know, like Jet fans, and just talk about how much we love the team. He wasn't trying to you initiate anything nothing. crazy. You lose. Listen. Good day, Look. sir. Hey, man. You know, and that's what he's trying to do. He is trying to have a good day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah, all he's listen, trying to do. It's, it's all fun and games. Right, Steve? Yeah, it's all fun and games. It's all, it's all it's jokes. All, it's all fun. And listen, it's all exactly. funny games. And one last thing I'm going to say it before is. I go. Mm -hmm. No, one last thing I just want to say before I go. You know, everybody's all yeah. talking about, like, how everybody's all winning in this offseason. You know, the Bills may move, the Dolphins may move. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what happens after free agency, it doesn't matter what happens after free agency and how much money you get. You just got to see what happens on the field. Oof! Well, that's a that's a for you. That's I mean, that's just. <laughs> I mean, that's just. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Come on, man! He's just giving you a fake. Good night, man. He's fine. Have a good night, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got frostbite. That was Steve. so cold. My goodness, man! Come on, man! <laughs> this, this is crazy. First off, I want to thank Steve for calling me. You in. quiet, man. He. Dude, that take was nah. so bad, it got you quiet. We had we had radio nah, silence, man. <laughs> nah, man. Look, I want to thank Steve for calling in. He always comes in with the hot takes. You know, I, I, you you were trying to set him up. He, he has no beef with Tyrone. He's a good guy. Everybody's good. We all get along in this show. He just wanted to, you know, talk to Tyrone face to face and just laugh about the Jets. You know what I'm saying? I have a good one. Mm -hmm. He didn't mean anything by that at all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we're all just moving made through. A you know what I'm saying? I know they called it earlier words, and then with he, a little he juice. Threw, he, threw, he, he threw an ice cold. That may have been one of the worst parting takes ever. Just, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, man. Quiet, he just, man. He, you, you were come on, man. He's he just, just trying his best. You're, you're just always <laughs> jumping on this dude. He's just trying his even best, you man. Shocked. You couldn't even defend oh, that man. one. You couldn't even defend it. You had no words. <laughs> no, he had, listen, he, he gave us what he had, and he scrammed. You know what I'm saying? He gave us what he had, and he got out of there. And, and I appreciate that. You know, Steve is a guy, he, he gave us his best shot, and then he moved on. So shout out to him again. Everything between him and Tyrone is good. Everybody tonight has been great. Great callers moving and grooving. Ronaldo called in earlier with a cup of that juice. He's moving and grooving as well. Everybody's good, man. No issues. All right, we're going to go to Mr. Spotty Blackman. Kevin, what's up, man? Hey, uh, tonight's a good night, guys. How you been? Not too bad, man. We're just, uh, we, we, we've had some interesting calls, man. Steve kind of <laughs> popped it off, but yeah, how, how are man. things going down in your neck of the woods, man? You know what? Uh, I'm in Georgia, and so uh, I'm in a little bit of, uh, I guess, what we call a bubble here, so... I mean, uh, in surrounding areas, everything is in lockdown, but uh, I drove past a restaurant today, and it was absolutely packed, so I'm seeing some stupidity going on, just telling everybody, and I'll just, I'll just, I'll say this, and I'll move on. Stay in the house, wash your hands, stop being stupid, please. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's to say, it's so funny, because, like, we, you know, in New Jersey, we were, we were there, like, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, where... It was like, oh, everybody's doing this, everybody's doing that, and then within a day, the governor shut everything down. He's like, that's it. Yeah. You're all, you're all, you know, pretty much closed 85% of the state. So, 
It's crazy, man. Um, what are your thoughts on – we'll start with David Fales, man. What are your thoughts on the signing of him as the backup quarterback for now? Who? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why again did that happen? Yeah, conspiracy theories aside, conspiracy theories aside, horrible move, obviously. Um, but with that being said, I guess I, I, I would have to think that if we are to assume that Joe Douglas is worth any – salt at all that this is not going to be the only move that he makes as far as the quarterback room is concerned uh yeah you they might know uh, Gase's system but that didn't actually work out too well for the last couple guys that we had in that in that situation um so you know I'll be honest with you it's kind of a non-factor to me at this point yeah it happened and it's one of the only moves that we have to discuss at this point but um, it really it, it really doesn't add much to the conversation. Uh, Fails is is not at all as, as what I would consider to be a quality backup. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is that if you're just looking for a body to walk around and holding a clipboard, we probably could have done a little bit better with even doing that. So, yeah, David Fails that 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 was that was one of those uh, you know no points added, no points taken kind of moves. Um, even though I would I would maybe maybe want to give a little bit of uptick in the you know the move that actually took away uh, a little bit just because it, it does bring to, it does call into question you know some of what Joe Douglas is thinking right now yeah I'm, I'm not a I'm not a Joe Douglas hater I'm not saying I don't like all of the stuff that he's done but there are some some head scratchers that uh, you know kind of leave uh, a little bit to be desired so I mean to me I'm just looking at these things as maybe rookie mistakes you know he's doing some things that you know he's trying some things and see if they work out um, but just that face value, they don't look good. That move in particular just it doesn't look good to me. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I want to thank you for calling in, Spider. You know, I love going back and forth with you uh, about this team, man. And, and you know, I, I, as well, have some questions about some of the moves that Joe has made, you know, particularly that Fant move, because there was such yeah. a need at this offense. I mean, you, you know, we, we, we've gone back and forth about this for I don't know how long about yeah. how we needed to upgrade this offensive line. We needed to put guys on here that really could produce and really step up for Sam. And it's like, we I mean, outside of Connor McGovern, we got some guys who were like, eh, is this offensive line as a whole really better than it was last year? And now I think we're going into this draft unless, again, he makes a trade or signs a guy or something like that. You know, we're still looking at, hey, we have a hole there at left tackle that still needs to be addressed. And there are some fans that are screaming, you know, Jerry Judy, CeeDee Lamb, Henry Ruggs, we need to take him out. I mean, in your mind, is there any way that you could look at the situation and go, I'll take a wide receiver over a left tackle at 11? No. Um, And to be perfectly honest with you, the more I think about it, the more it just makes me think that if we don't get one of the the, – and 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 my my take on the tackles is, is, has evolved a little bit just because uh, of of the, the you know I guess the 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 rise of Josh Johnson uh, in the conversation and and seeing all, all the other you know players that we've added and and the 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 pass happy kind of scheme that I'm imagining these guys are are being brought in for um, if we don't get one of those guys at eleven I I just I I don't, I don't know. The, of, we would love to have a Judy, but we would also like to have uh, Sam Darnold have enough time to be able to reach a guy like that or have enough time to be able to find a guy like that. Um, and without the upgrades to the offensive line, that's still not going to be the case. And, uh, uh, again, what we have is a luxury pick that we can't use. Uh, we just got rid of a guy who, you know, probably could have been as impactful as, as somebody like that quite possibly. Um, if they learned how to use them correctly, and if we got uh, protection for a quarterback. But at this point in time, we don't have any of those things, and I think that it, it's unrealistic to think that that would be the move um, at this point when we really we haven't done enough at all on the offensive line. And I'm going to just this real. Even if, we were, even if we were to just say, all right, we'll go get a Trent Williams or we'll bring in a Jason Peters or we'll do something along those lines, and, and those are marked, marked upgrades at that position, uh, they would be. Um, I still don't think it's enough to say that, okay, now that that's done, let's go, you know, let's go ball to the wall and let's go get a wide receiver that, uh, you know, we're still not going to have be as effective with as, as what we need to be. And I'll be honest with you, I, I'm not even sure if I trust Adam Gates to be able to use a guy like that anyway. I, I haven't seen anything from him that, that qualifies to me, that uh, anything that he's going to do is going to make something like that worthwhile for the team as far as the functional football is concerned. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't see it. 
Um, not to mention the fact that you know, if uh, my my thoughts on this is that I'm I'm not really even sure if the, if the first pick, if it's not a tackle, is it, even going to be that big of a deal anyway. It, 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 the 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 second round, third round, all all of those those day two picks, all of them, those are the picks that he needs to nail. Those are the picks that we need to hit on because we have way too many holes. We have way too many deficiencies. Again, we're not looking to compete for a Super Bowl in particular, but the, 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 I guess the idea is to compete, period. And if we go out and we you know, put our best foot forward and we, and we get a mud hole stomped on us because we just don't have the talent, that actually just goes back to where it is that, you know, where we've been and where it is that we realistically kind of are still in this moment. We just, you know, no, the, the, the pick to me, I, I, the more, the closer we get to the draft, the more I'm not even necessarily, like, concerned with it. I really just want to see the overall, I want to see the entire package. This one pick, I'm not sure if the one pick is going to be enough to, to, to change any, any uh, you know, kind of needles or any narratives about what it is that we're doing. We really need to hit on all of them. So we can talk about the one. Obviously, it's important uh, it, as far as people wanting to discuss where it is that we're going. But um, the, all of those day two picks, uh, those are going to be really more important to where it is that we end up. Yeah, no, <clears throat> excuse me. I agree with you, and that's where Mike McCagney completely didn't do anything. But if you look at free agency, would you say that this team has been upgraded? Do you feel – like the offense has gotten is better now, or the defense is better now due to free agency. No, and I mean it, that, that's just a simple answer. No, um, I, I think we we did a good job in bringing back some of the guys that we needed to just to, to maintain. But uh, th- that defense played lights out last year, and we did it without C.J. Mosley. We've added a couple of linebackers. We've we've added some corner. It, you know what? Hold on. I'll say that the, the cornerback position has been upgraded because I really like Pierre Desir. I really do. I I, I Wanted to draft the kid back, uh, you know, how many ever years ago that was, five years or something like that. I wanted to draft him. I thought it was a good story. Uh, a, a, a big, you know, talented corner. I think that is an upgrade. But as far as everything else is concerned, I don't know. We're, we're, we're kind of still middling to where we were. And the offense, while well, we brought in some names, I don't know if the whole unit as a whole is, is going to be better. We have to see how, how they, how they kind of mesh and, and gel and work together. Um, I don't want to be the the, the the doomsday, you know, kind of kind of fan here. But uh, you know, if these guys don't pan out, man, really, what it is that we did is we just bought another we just bought another off season uh, for of excuses for Adam Gase, and uh, I, I don't want to give him any excuses. I don't want to give him any excuses at all. And I don't think that that's what Joe Douglas is doing. But I think that I don't think that's what that is his intention. Excuse me, but uh, that may actually be what it is that he's doing. So. You know, I, 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 I like that we address the offensive line, and obviously Conor McGovern is, is, a, is a big get for us. Um, but I'm going to keep it real. I was one who thought that, you know, Harrison did a, a fair enough job, um, you know, especially considering how he, he played better than, you know, Ryan Khalil, who's supposedly this you know, perennial pro bowl. So um, we, we, we just we have too many holes. It, 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 Steve made a point. We really kind of can't. We, we can't really judge until we see it on the field, and it's it, 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 it's kind of a you know yeah. a sit on the fence take or whatever it, it is. But I mean, it, that really is factual. Until we see what happens on the field, none of this makes any sense. Because we, we could we could draft a receiver in the fifth round, and a guy comes in and, and, and is a, a, an immediate stud, you know, and 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 you know we didn't have to go at eleven for him. You know, we we picked a guy later. Yeah, on but Tyron, but Tyron, friend, if you now, look at if we if we're being fair though, and we look at the overall talent just on paper of the Buffalo Bills compared to the Jets, it's not close. And the Dolphins no. made significant upgrades. I mean, just in terms of we obviously whatever happens on the field happens on the field, and that could whatever. But the Dolphins added a lot of significant talent. The Bills have a lot of talent, and you compare their moves to ours. I mean, I mean, it's it's not exactly pretty. No, no, no. And, and look, look, we, we, the, the 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 AFC is, you know, it's it not, you know, and none none of that is set in stone. Who, who's gonna who's gonna you know take the reins in this? Is, is is none of it is set. I mean, depending upon what the Patriots do at, at quarterback right now, they are kind of still the team to beat. Um, the, the the Buffalo Bills, just based on where it is that they finished, they still look to be solid. Um, Miami's got 14 draft picks. So, I mean, if you really think about that, they're in a position yeah. to really add quite a bit of talent and, and maybe make some moves that, that could really, really supplement what it is that they did. And I know they were, you know, kind of a bad team. But, you know, I think they've bought into what Brian Flores is preaching down there. And if those guys gel and they come together, you know, it, it could be a perfect storm for them. 
we actually have yeah. uh, what I think is probably the, the most uncertain situation because, real talk, we have the worst coach. <laughs> I mean, that's, we'll just, just keep that real. Um, we, we, we got a situation where the most important player on our team um, is not going to be handled by someone who we, you know, know for a fact is going to be able to get the most out of him. And, and you know, Joe Douglas did some things to weaken him by, by letting Robbie go and, and maybe not by addressing the offensive line as aggressively as what we maybe should have. Um, but, you know, again, uh, the questions abound. We're, 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 we're kind of leaving, leaving some things to be, to be maybe hashed out uh, in a way that really isn't going to be beneficial for the team. Because, I mean, if we go out there and, and we do stink up the joint, then again, the, the narrative changes and says, maybe it's not Adam Gates, maybe it is Sam Donald, or maybe, you know, maybe we need to look in a different direction and maybe 2021 now we're looking at, oh, what, what kind of what quarterback can we bring in or, or should we trade for a quarterback or, or what should we do, you know? And, and those, things are just, those, those things are just bad for us right now. It's a, it's a horrible situation to be in. It's a horrible uh, thought process to, to even undertake. But, you know, to be honest with you, if, if it plays out that way, what what other direction do we have to go in but, but in that? And we start pointing fingers at a guy that, uh, you know, honestly a lot of us believe has what it takes to be the guy. But uh, exactly. as, as, as with this team over the course of the past how many of you know, years, we're not doing enough to, to protect him. We're not doing enough to build him up. We're not doing enough to, to make him successful. So we have a lot of work yeah. to do, guys. We really do. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that. That was a great perspective there. And also, another thing I want to toss in is that, look, I understand that the Bills and the Dolphins, the the, the you know acquisitions that they've made and where they're at and how they've been built. But they're also, you know, we were ran worse than both of those teams. If you look at the Dolphins, when it was time to dump talent and it was time to get capital back and it was time to reload time, that's what they did. And they weren't just they weren't just managing you know properly as far as general. They also got the right coach in there. You you talked about it, Flores. And I'm, 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 that's why I didn't want Adam Gaze. I was talking about these things. It's not just about the general manager. It's also about the guy that's going to lead the team. If you look at the Patriots, they've won a lot of Super Bowls. They've, they've had a lot of, of success. But it wasn't just Brady. It wasn't just the players on the field. They also had the right guy leading them. They also had the, one of the best coaches of, of our times, you know, making the calls. They're, they're – their handling of situational football is immaculate. They know every single rule up and down the list. They take advantage of every single thing, every nook and cranny. They take advantage of it because they have a guy that understands what's going on in the NFL, how to attack you, how to neutralize your weapons, and how to take full advantage of everything that's going on. So when you have that type of leadership, that's big too. That can boost the team. Like and I just, We just talked about it. Flores. We watched Flores take a team that's in a full-blown rebuild, step in, and beat our ass like yeah. nobody's business. Yeah. <laughs> and, dude, they looked like, you know, a team that was contending. When they played us, they stepped in. You didn't know that it was a team full of nobodies. They stepped in and said, okay, so what? You know, we still coming at you full steam. And they took care of business against us. And that was a game where I don't think anybody picked them at all to win. And they stepped in and took care of business with us. So, you know, it, it, it's tough coming from that standpoint. But I, I want to stick with the, with the team and with the defense with you because the guy that just let, got let go, Kirkpatrick, do you think the Jets should go after him to fill that other cornerback spot? Because I know you love Desir, but there's, you know, some fans are looking at that situation and saying, hey, we still need to fill that, that number two spot, and they don't necessarily believe that Bless Austin or Harrison are the guys to be there. What are your thoughts on that? You know, depending upon the contract, uh, I would most definitely kick the tires on it. Um, we have, you, you, we've talked about this, obviously, and, and, and your point is, is extremely well taken. I think it, it would be, you know, difficult for anybody to look at that situation and say that we really don't need to still make moves in that regard. <coughs> but what I'm thinking is that we're more than likely going to end up drafting a couple of kids um, and, and, and I, I say that just because I know that the, the influx of talent is, is mandatory for us, but, but obviously to build, we want to build with young guys. And if we're going to go through some growing pains or what have you, we would like to do it with guys that we, we kind of, you know, brought in for specific reasons because they have specific skill sets and talent. I think, you know, you bring in a veteran guy and Greg Williams is going to make it pop. I, I, I believe that anyway. I think Greg Williams is, is probably one of the most important assets that this team has as right now. Maybe right behind Joe Douglas, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, the more I think about it, the more I would just prefer 
that, uh, you know, we kind of focus on on the the foundational building of this organization. I'm not sure we're going to do that free, through free agency. And not only that, but um, I do want to be conscious of, of, of uh, what other moves it is that we still have available to make. But a big splash move, a big money move that I would hope that if we were to, going to make any, I would think I, w- I would want it to be a pass rusher um, at this point just because I don't think we, we're going to be looking to draft a pass rusher. It, even even though there are some guys uh, that, that, you know, are, are, could be in the conversation for that, I just don't necessarily know if, we're gonna, if that's really going to be a high priority for us. I think offense is going gonna, is gonna to dominate what it is that we do early. Uh, defense is probably going to take, uh, you know, the backseat just because defense is really the strength of this team at this point. But uh, bringing another cornerback, I think, is necessary. How we do it, uh, that that in particular is uh, is going to be. It, it's not a just a cut and dry situation. Say, so, yeah, let's go ahead and throw eight or nine million at this guy and bring him in. Uh, who knows what the number is going to be? Um, we want to be very careful about that. I do think that if we do spend anything, if if it's not an offensive tackle or a pass rusher, we should do it. And that, that's just that's just my thinking on. It. I don't rather really think that we should. Um, but I, but I do understand uh, a lot of folks wanting. Uh, to be uh, to be right about this, but you know, if if, if things shake out and Connie goes back to to Seattle and, and and Griffin becomes available, you know, I could see wanting to pay that guy some money. Golden, I could I could see him, you know, wanting to, wanting to pay those guys some money to bring them in. Um, but I don't know, Joe Douglas. Uh, uh, Joe Douglas is really he, it, it's underwhelming for me right now. It's just <laughs> underwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, yeah, and every, every 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 move that we make, it just seems like mm, okay. Well, but mm, no. See, the, know, my favorite part, my favorite part is favorite part is every move we make. People sitting there justifying how great it is. That that's what my most entertaining part of all this is that we're in the part of the 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 Joe Douglas era where he's a genius. Everything he does is perfect, and we don't see the big picture. We don't see the process. Where it's like we can see like it's okay to see flaws and questions and. Like, I'm telling you, I get conversations all the time where people are like, what do you think about free agency? Are you guys any better? I'm like, I don't really think so. I'm like, I don't really see it. Like, I don't, like, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of risk, a lot of what ifs, a lot of could haves and should haves and maybes, but there's nothing that makes you give that warm, fuzzy feeling right now. It just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, there's nothing that's good or bad. We could be, you know, who knows, but it's not like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it's just it's a year that we're looking nothing. It's going to be a year of just like yeah, trying to out. figure out what we have for next year. That's what it is. So. Exactly. But thank you nothing for calling in, man. Out. Well, first of all, thank you for calling in. Thank you for your donation. And give me, yeah. give us all your information about the podcast. All right. Uh, guys, thank you for, for having me, obviously. We appreciate I appreciate the and, – and, you know, I, I like – I really, really enjoy talking football with you guys. Uh, Bobby Blackman, it's real simple, S-P-O-T-T-Y, Blackman, B-L-A-C-K-M-A-N. How about us? Weapons Hot Podcast. We actually had two podcasts this week because we did one on Sunday. We had a special edition last night. You want to follow us, CNC Jets Factor, F-A-C-T-O-R. My guy CJ does a phenomenal job putting the show together, getting guests. I mean, we had Michael LeGarris on last night. We had Scott Mason from Play Like a Jet last night. Really, really fun show. Um, uh, Weapons Top Podcast, CNC Jets Factors. Uh, CJ DeSimone, my guy at uh, Jets Fan 0523. Um, Spotty Blackman hit us up um, every week. Plus, we've got, a, you know, obviously we've got a lot of the, the free agency stuff coming up. We're going to be talking draft and all the other things coming up, too. Um, really would love to have you guys on. We, we'll, we'll talk about that as, as it comes. But uh, thanks again well, for having me on. That, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Don't, don't, be, don't be lying. Why do you always be lying, man? Why do you always have to tell a story, bruh? What is Yo, I'll, 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 I'll come. I'll come to Cali. I'll take you to Tommy's. We'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll get. We'll get some chili burgers. <laughs> you know about that Tommy's? I, it's free, but you know about that Tommy's. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, do you? But do it's you, free. You, look, I, you know I, what I'm saying? You, you, know, you know, I know it. LBC. LBC. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right, fellas. Once again, have, oh, love. Have a good night. Thanks again. Have, have a good night, man. All right, Joe. We're going to go to John in Brooklyn. John, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? Big fan of the show. Oh, thank you, man. We're just uh, looking at this team, and what are your thoughts on free agency? Do you think this team is, like, the roster's upgraded, or how do you feel about it? Well, I've been listening to the past few callers, and this is what I'll say. Um, 
I think as a fan base right now, we would feel differently if we signed a guy like Joe Tooney. And unfortunately, the Patriots tagged him. And as much as I would have loved to have signed a guy like Jack Conklin, it's possible that maybe he just didn't want to come here or, you know, Joe Douglas didn't value him. Um, so, I mean, I feel like you guys. I have I have mixed emotions about our additions. I think, I mean, I, I think we improved in, I mean, in some areas, like, like center, obviously, with McGovern, and um, as far as George Fant goes, I think if it's 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 tough because I think if he plays well, we have him on we have him on a on a good deal for the next three years, and if he pays if he plays poorly, then we can cut him after this year. Um, yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, like you guys have been saying, we're gonna have to go we're gonna have to go after a tackle no matter what. As long as yeah. hopefully one of those top four guys are there at eleven. Yeah. Thank you for calling in, and I hear you. You know, we're all still trying to figure out, you know, how the piece of this puzzle is, is going to fit. You know, we're all, like you said, fan. You know, people are definitely worried about him. I am as well. There's some some signings that have been solid, but there's some signings where it's just like oh, we wanted more because there were names out there, there were guys out there, but they're gone now. But what are your thoughts on a trade maybe for Trent Williams? I mean, would you be interested in that? Do you think that would bolster the offensive line? And if so, what exactly do you think Joe Douglas should give up for him? Well, seeing that he's, I mean, he sat out all of last year and he's pretty adamant about not playing for the Redskins again. Um, I, I, I think we could give up one of our thirds and then maybe next year, maybe like a fifth. If, I mean, uh, that's, that's what I, that's what I would offer. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's fair compensation, but I, I don't think I would go much higher than that because like, like you guys have said, obviously, you know what I mean? Once you trade for him, then you're going to have to give him a deal at the same time. Like you've said, Joe, he's, he's been one of the best tackles in the league for the past you know what I mean? Since he's since he's been in the league, so I mean, I I would love to I would love yeah. to get him, or even sign a guy like like Peters. If we don't end up getting one of the top four guys in the draft, I mean, there's guys like Josh Jones and Austin Jackson, and you know who who we maybe could. I don't I don't think any of them are going to fall to the second round, but um, I don't know. It's it's just it's really frustrating because I feel like we've been in the same position. And like going into this year, we're going to be in the same position of just like we're not we're not going to know what what Sam truly truly is, and it's it's yep. really it's just so frustrating because I feel like no matter what, what yeah. we do, going like even even with the draft, like I mean I, I guess we could we could hit on a few guys and maybe draft a couple of receivers and build up the offensive line, but it just it's still not enough, and it's just like you guys have said, it's another year of his rookie contract, you know what I mean, uh, passing by that we're not taking advantage of. And then before you know it, you know, we're going we're gonna to be looking, deciding whether or not we're going to give him a long-term extension or if we're going to move on. And what I wanted to ask you guys was actually is what do you think, your, what do you think Joe Douglas's level of commitment is to Sam considering he didn't draft him? Oh, I think he's fully committed to him. And I think they, they think yeah. he is their franchise quarterback. I think that's that's not the concern, but I, I have the same concern that you have, and we talked about this earlier, is like, as Jeff fans that have been fans for a long time, we've seen all the ways you can destroy a young quarterback. We saw it with Sanchez. We saw it with Gino. Hackenberg just sucked. But we saw it with Sanchez right. and Gino, especially Sanchez, when yeah. he had some weapons, and we took him away from him. And then the offensive line yep. went to hell. And like, everything slowly but surely deteriorated. And that's almost the opposite where it's like you had the opportunities to build around it and we're not really doing it or we're being frugal about it. Kind of, to me, it's like with an eye to next year. Like, this is what it seems like. It's like, why are we mailing in years? Why are we... Dude, I'm the right. same. I have the same exact just... experience as you. It, it's just, it's driving me crazy because, like, the worst thing you want is another like, average year from Sam this year. Going into next year, it's still the same questions. Did he play 16 games? Right. Can he t- cut down on his turnovers? Can he read defenses? Can he do all these things? 
we got to start identifying these things. Like, he, you got to know what you have. And, Joe, I mean, we, we, we have, it's a legitimate concern. Like, we all love him. He's got to prove a lot of things. And if we don't give him the opportunity exactly. to do that, we're failing him. We're, we're truly failing him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and that's, it, what, it, that's what I said earlier as well, is that if we, you know, up until this point have checked off damn near every single thing on, in 101, how to ruin a quarterback. You know, how to ruin a quarterback 101, we've done it. You know, we've given them bad offensive coordinators. We've given them next to no weapons. We've given them next to no protection. You know, our philosophy, our, our, our franchise philosophy, you know, before getting him and even after getting him in terms has been horrific as well. You know, team building, horrific. This, a, right. are, those are all the ways that you ruin a quarterback, you know. So going yeah. forward, we've got to change that. We've got to. and We've got to give him weapons. We've got to surround him with weapons. But we talked about a Kyler Murray, Watson, hell, Josh Allen. These are young quarterbacks that are being given weapons. That's what every other team does. Every other team says, okay, this is our franchise guy. We know he's talented. Give him somebody. Let's see where he goes. Let's see what the ceiling is here. I talked about it. I need to know, are you closer on the scale to Ryan Leaf or are you closer to the scale of Peyton Manning? I need to know where you are on that scale. Because if we do not figure that out soon, we're going to have to pay him. And I'm telling y'all, a lot of y'all think that this is a joke, it's a game. It's not. When you have to pay a franchise quarterback in today's NFL, it does inhibit your ability to continue to build the team the way you think you want to in free agency. You're not going to have that money when 30% of your cap is ate up or 40% of your cap is ate up every year. That's consistent. There, he's going to be making 30-something million every single year. That, that boulder is going to be sitting on that cap every year. And you're just going to have to deal with it. It's going to become harder to surround him with weapons. If you want to sign a guy here or there, it's going to become harder to build your team. So you need to figure out what he is now, just like the Bills are trying to figure out who's Josh Allen. Let's give him Stephon Diggs. Now we're really about to figure out who he is. Is he trash or is he, you know, or is he gold? What is he? You know, we've got uh, to do and, Yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I, think he's, I think he's going to be a great quarterback. I really do. I mean, I know, I know you guys – I know you especially, Joe. I mean, I know you feel that way, Tess, and I know, you know what I mean, you like them too. But the problem mm-hmm. is with our situation, with how poorly we've drafted over these last, I mean, Oh, yeah. I mean, it just goes back forever, it seems. But yeah. we can't, we can't, it's like we don't want to give up premium picks to trade for guys who could help Sam. You know, like, I mean, I don't know if we were ever even into um, Hopkins or, you know, it's like, it's like you want to address these needs, but at the same time, you don't want to give up these premium picks because that's that's really the way you're supposed to build build the team. That's how you build a sustainable franchise, you know. And mm-hmm. so we're, I mean, we're well, you, know, you, know, I, I, you know, you know what this all comes down to. This all comes down to Jets ownership completely screwing the pooch last year by letting McCagnan conduct the draft and go through free agency. This right. all could have been avoided. This seriously could have been. Like, this, this entire yeah. mess that we're dealing with now could have, been, could have been done last year. Like, we're a year behind because of their decision and their incompetence. That's just a fact. It's just, it's just the way it I is. I would say, uh, yeah. It starts, I, I, it starts at the I top. Hear, You're 100% right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I hear you there, but I, I think it even started before that. Because before the rebound, they should have never even let him go after year. They should have fired him after year two. Because you could see, you knew that, like, this guy was horrific. His drafting was horrific then. His whole first draft class was busted and pretty much busted out. They're all gone now. If you look at those drafts, 2015, 2016, that a lot of those guys are not here. They're not giving us anything. But that, Joe, last year was even worse, issue. though, dude. You let him. No, dude, yeah, you oh, imagine yeah. letting you let him <laughs> let, let him spend a hundred million dollars and draft players and then fire him. You could not be. I mean, this whole thing, dude, all these players we're trying to get rid of now. Like it's, it's just so ass backwards. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you're you right. Go. Don't get me going. You don't. You know. You don't get me going. You, you already know that. I'm trying. Dude, we needed a pass rusher. And we needed an offensive lineman. He drafted an interior defensive tackle. You tell me how to help that work. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it's, down. It's, it's unbelievable. Hey, Trey it really is. It's unbelievable. It's offensive lineman. He said, "No, we we good. Let's get this D tackle." What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> it's got no weapons. What are you talking about? Like, that, that's crazy. But, you know, you know I, yeah, yeah, firing him after allowing him all that, you know, all, all that space to, to use up all of our capital and all of our, 
all of our money as well in free agency was horrific. But he should have been gone before that because we knew he was not going to be the guy. But continuing to go forward and build around, you have to do that. You have to do something. You've got to change it up. And I hear what you were saying about DeAndre Hopkins and not trading some of that capital. I look at it like I get what you're saying, but when you're in that space, you have to make that. If we were offered DeAndre Hopkins for what the Cardinals got him for, I would make that move. Because you don't yeah, have no, the absolutely. time. At, yeah, you don't, you don't have the time at this point to not do that. Because you farted right. around for three years now. All the stuff that we're talking about, all the stuff that Josh Allen has, that stuff should have been put in place throughout these first three years for Sam. He should already have an offensive line in place. He should have already yeah. had some targets here and there. He, you know, even, again, if you look at Josh Allen's situation, the only thing that they were really missing was that, that number one. That guy that when the chips are down, this is who I'm going to. This is my elite guy on my football team. This is my elite receiver. They were missing that guy. All this stuff should have already been in place. We should be competing because Sam is in his rookie year contract. We should be competing right now. But because you farted around for three years and you blew out drafts and you busted out these mid-round guys like uh, <laughs> Chad Hansen and our Darius Stewart because you were bringing in bums, because you were drafting guys that gave you no production like Christian Hackenberg and other guys you would cut a year after drafting them, this is what happens. So that's why I'm, I'm saying and I'm stressing the urgency. I understand people want patience. I'm a very patient fan as well. But I also understand where we are when you're talking about dealing with Sam Donald and that deal. You cannot give him money if you don't know who he is, and we need to figure out as soon as possible. So by any means necessary, you need to give him weapons. Because if you tie this franchise to this guy and he is not the guy, whew, Lord, let me tell you something, Jets fan. You ain't seen nothing like tying yourself to a franchise quarterback that's ass. Anybody remember that, that year that we gave Mark Sanchez all that money and that albatross? Oh, Can you imagine yeah, having – yeah, you remember that. <laughs> that year, we were like, what the hell did he just do? Imagine having to deal with that for four or five years. Oh, my that's Lord. Just, that's just unacceptable. If we don't, if we don't know <laughs> where he's at as a ball player in five oh. years, I mean, we don't even deserve him. No. <laughs> so. John, but, John, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate it. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Have a good night. Stay safe, man. Thank you. You know, Joe, Joe it's so funny because it, whoever listens to the show, obviously Yankee John, he tweets throughout our show. So if you're not following him, you've got to follow him because Yankee John is phenomenal. And when, when John called in, John from Brooklyn called in, you could just hear it in his voice, like the, the pain and anguish, and it was just like <laughs> – I think it's just here. Like, he, he uh-huh. wanted to be positive, but he's like, you know, I have these concerns. I want, like, it's just like, I could just sense it, man. He's like, I just don't like this this stuff here. I'm like, listen, it is what it is, man. Like, it, you don't have to, like, we listen, ideally, we all want to be positive. We want to think things are all going to work out and we're going to be good and great and life is great and everything else. But sometimes you just got to call it like you see it. And it's okay to be yeah. concerned. It's okay to question things. Like, at this point, you can question the front office because this front office hasn't done anything yet. This is their first yeah. off season to prove what they can do. They're not they're not beyond criticism here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again I want to thank the last caller for calling in. He's phenomenal. I, I urge people to, you know, give give an honest take. Take off those green glasses. If you have some concern, then state that concern. Because guess what? We're yep. talking about everything that we pretty much talked about tonight has been around what? Franchise quarterback Sam Darnold. Probably the most, well, the most coveted thing in the NFL, a franchise quarterback. I, there's team, I remember at one point, Tyson, you were saying, I will sell my soul. At, before we got Sam, I will sell my soul yep. for a franchise quarterback. Just, get, just give me one. I don't give a damn. You yep. want my left hand? All right, go ahead, take it. Just, just give yep. me some guy Please. that I know can be here for the next 10 you know, year, 10 plus years, that's going to be able to lead us. We are talking about that right now. And we have questions about, hey, are we truly set up to allow this kid to be great? That's what we're talking about. Everything from weapons to protection to, hell, the coach, the, the author of the genius, the guru. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about that right now. If you aren't concerned about that, if you aren't worried, if the green glasses are so stuck on your face where you're not looking and saying, hmm, is Sam really going to be able to succeed this year? Is this going to be another throwaway year? Because if we're talking about another throwaway year or we're talking about lapses in protection, we may not have to talk about another throwaway year because he might not survive the season. He's taking shots last year when we were talking. I was coming on talking about I've watched him play damn near, you know, 
throughout college, and I've never seen him limping around like this. I've never seen him afraid of contact. I talk about to, to his DNA because he's so scared to take shots. You don't ever want to talk about that when you're talking about building with a franchise quarterback. So, yeah, of course, people should be concerned because we're literally talking about the lifeblood of our franchise. People act as if we have been just, get, just blessed, like we've had franchise quarterbacks back, like we're the damn Colts or something, where you can get rid of Manning, move on, get yourself a luck, and then it's like, we're not that. We've been struggling here. Our offenses have been ass. Where have y'all been? Like, we need to really strap in and get focused around here and stop thinking, hey, everything's good because the cast of names are different. No, where's the talent? And if they're not talented or not as talented as some of the guys that we could have had a shot at, then yes, questions need to be asked. No, no arguments here, dude. That, that's what I keep saying. Like, and I'll keep repeating. Like, we entered this offseason with our biggest concern was the offense. Offense, offense, offense. We're going into April 1st, mm-hmm. and I still, have the same que- I still have a lot of the same questions. Like, I, I don't, exactly. like, I, I just can't, like, like, the one thing I hate the most, and this isn't picking out any person in particular, but don't send me a YouTube video of five highlights of a player and saying, this is what we oh, got. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Yeah. And I'm tired of getting them, dude. Like, I get videos all day long of people, oh, this and this and this. Dude, I can give you YouTube video of any guy in the NFL to sell something, but there's a reason why guys are coming on very reasonable, cheap bargain deals one year deals. There's reasons for this, especially exactly. out of position that get that gets paid very well. Like if, if yeah. offensive linemen are getting paid fourteen million dollars a year and we're getting them for four and five or six. I mean there's reasons for this. You're taking a chance. It's not the same tier. It's a, it's a different level player. You gotta yeah. hope it all pans out, but like and, and it's just it's just a legitimate concern. Like I mean, listen, I I would love for all work out, Joe, and we get five guys that are all, you know, mid tier pay and they're all good and they're a good line and everything works out. Well wonderful. But history dictates that that doesn't usually happen like that. So yeah, we'll see. I know I could just I could already hear the feedback tomorrow. I could already sense it. I could just feel it. Like my our timeline is going to be a disaster. So we're going to go to I do. You don't understand. The minute this show gets uploaded on iTunes, the, the feedback we just get roasted for, for like six hours. It's just. But now we're going to go to our good friend Justin. Justin, what's up, man? Oh, what's up, fellas? Why do you sound you sound angry, man? Are you all right? Another terrible move by Joe Douglas. Let's call it what it <laughs> is. <laughs> you don't like fails? <laughs> Fail. First off, what do you look for in a backup quarterback? Someone that has experience. Well, he doesn't have any experience. I mean, I don't care if he's in Adam Gates' system. I mean, what does that mean at this rate? The guy doesn't know how to use players that are not in his system or in his system. So what's the difference if the damn guy is in an Adam Gates, quote-unquote, Adam, in Adam Gates system? That was a terrible move. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I want to thank you for calling in, Justin. Look, I, you know, I said this is kind of the same thing. Like, hey, you know, I, I, there's other guys that are out there that could have given us Hello. You know, a, you a bit more week. of a bigger presence. Matt Moore play a little bit. Pay a little bit yeah. of seasoning for Joe Flacco. Freak, I'm even, I mean, this, this is not a joke. Geno Smith is probably one of the best back and quarterbacks out there. I mean, at least he has some experience. That's, uh, we're mm-hmm. going to toss in the towel? I thought we already went down this route last year. I mean, we already did this. We need some more experience. I mean, if Sam goes down, you're just going to toss the towel in? I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's not it's how it should work. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you, Justin. I I, I want to stick with the offense with you, man, because you're you're fired up tonight, and you're you're already bringing it. You look at this team, and to me, there's still a hole there at left tackle. I don't think you want to have yep. George Fant starting there. And I, there's a lot of people that have called in though and tried to advocate for taking a wide receiver over a left tackle in the first round. What are your thoughts on that? And could you make an argument to do that? Mm, I can make an argument both ways. To tell you the truth. I mean, I'm I'm still an advocate for bringing back. I mean, uh, what's his name? I mean, obviously trade for Trent Williams. If the, a third, I'll do it for a third all day. I mean, second, I think that's asking too much. But I mean, Jason Peters, the stopgap. I mean, I I would still bring in Kelvin Beecham. I mean, I think we can get him maybe on an okay contract there. I mean, why 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 are we considering Jason Peters but not Kelvin Beecham? I think he holds his own for now. I guess. Now, there, there are some rumors that Jadavion Clowney could go back to Seattle. Would you go after Everson Griffin then? 
I said it last week. Uh, Everson Griffin or Golden is the, the this. He would take. We're talking about taking our defense to the next level. I know we, we want to. I, I think we're going to address offensive line and obviously cornerback in the draft and receiver with this deep draft class. So, I mean, Everson Griffin or Golden is a no-brainer. I mean, uh, this is the thing I don't get. People, Jay said we had money, but I don't, I don't think we really know how much money we have because no matter who you look on in the cap, the cap guys, no one has a clue because these signings aren't official. So I don't really know how much money we have and if we could – get a guy like Griffin. I mean, if we have the money, that's really a no-brainer in my eyes for Griffin or Golden at this rate in free agency. I think that would be like get, hitting it. I would think hitting it out of the park right now, getting a guy like that at this rate. This time in free agency, I mean, come on, that's a no-brainer. But do we have the money for that? I don't think we do. Yeah, that's a good question. I know that you know a lot of people don't like Manish, but he usually has a lot of good nuggets in his articles. He keeps referring to that, saying, the Jets are telling free agents like they don't they don't have a lot of cash to spend. There, there's a reason why they're going like this approach because first of all they have a lot of holes, but also they don't have a lot of money. So that's interesting yeah, too, yeah. man. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting. I mean, yeah. one guy reported like forty million. One guy said thirty something. Connor Hughes said seven point five. One guy saying ten point five. So I mean, can we get an accurate number before? I don't think we can even afford a guy like Griffin. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good possibility. Now, what do you want to do about running back, man? Because right now you have Bell, Powell, and Montgomery. You haven't signed anywhere else. You have Trent yeah. Cannon. I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you? Are you looking to draft guys or sign guys, or what do you want to do? Uh, to be honest with you, running backs just gonna. I think that's just gonna be pushed off till next year. I mean, I would just go with Cannon and just. I don't think we have enough draft to to really go for that. I mean, ideally, that's what you want to do: draft the running back in later rounds, but. I think we just have so many holes where I think that's just going to maybe try to get an undrafted guy or maybe Cannon has a breakout year. Who knows? I don't think we have enough draft picks to really consider a running back. I think it's just we got to bulk up on offensive line and just cornerbacks and receivers. I don't think really running back is really a high high priority right now. I think maybe take a guy in the sixth round or something if if that's what it is, I mean, hey, we got to worry about a punter now. I mean, we don't even have a punter under contract, and you want to worry about a backup running back? I mean, well, they're gonna, I, dude, I mean I gonna, think, Gates is going to sign that Matt Dar guy from the Dolphins. I, Gates is so loyal to his freaking his former players. Like, they won't re-sign Lack Edwards. They'll sign that guy Dar. I, I guarantee it. Yeah, that's that club, that guy, that, that, that terrible punter, that old veteran, yeah, I can see it. Yep, that's another cheap contract. Justin, this was a good call, man. We had no arguments, no fighting. This was fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> See, Joe, we had a week with actually no fighting at all. This is amazing. Hey, man, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. First off, I want to thank Justin for calling in. He was great, but all the callers were great. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of fun tonight, a lot of people bringing different opinions, different debates. That's what we're all about. You know, we're, we're not, you know, we're not out here trying to bite people's heads off or anything. We're all about good discussion and great debates. All right, we're going to try to get one more call in here. We'll go to Victor and Yonkers. Victor, what's up, man? Yeah. How you doing, guys? I'm, I'm, about, to change, sorry. I'm about to change that uh, no fighting thing right now. Um, uh-uh. I have a, I've, I've been listening, and uh, I, I've noticed, just like when I called last week, everyone calls and talks about the same thing. Well, I wanted to mention last week a controversial idea. Well, um, it looks like uh, he's not really making, uh, Joe Douglas is not making these moves that will, you know, explode on paper or even investing a lot of money. Like, it's almost like he's doing a complete rebuild. Mm-hmm. What do you think Sam Donald's worth to the Miami Dolphins? Oh, uh, <laughs> dude, hey, if they, if they even would... consider trading Sam, they won't trade him to a division rival. There's no yeah, way in hell they go to the they to, to, like, to the Dolphins or the Reds. Someone that has two first round picks. But what about you? Us? Think he's worth two first round picks? What is he worth to us, though? <laughs> what do we have? Is why he worth why more would than we? Tua? Yeah. Do you think Sam Donald's better than Tua? Yes. Do yes, you I think do. he's better than Trevor Lawrence? Yes. Yes, I do. I think Sam Donald is one think... of the best quarterbacks in the league. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Jet fan. I'm saying that because I've seen it. 
I'm saying that because I've watched him make throws, and I'm not talking about random, like regular throws in the NFL. I'm talking touch dimes that the elite quarterbacks in the NFL make. The reason why we have been bad, the reason why you're even talking about the possibility of trading Sam Darnold is because we have not done right by him. Team has yes, been mismanaged. Exactly. That's to be exactly. completely what mismanaged. If we have, okay, what if we have first, so, for, uh, first round picks and we sign? We'll Cam still Newton. be looking because we'll no 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 because we'll still be looking for what we already have. You, you're you're getting all these first round picks trying to do what? Trace a franchise quarterback. We already have that. So why don't we just well, go around not really. if you so put, that he can be if successful? You put, how about Jamal Adams then? I've talked we all that. love Jamal. We all love Jamal. I don't think I've liked a, a Jet player better than Jamal since Revis. We all love Jamal. But we're going to have to pay him a lot of money or we could flip him for two first-round picks and put a star-wide receiver and an offensive lineman in front yeah, of him. See, here's, the, here's the problem. I don't think I don't you, know I don't you think you'll get the two first-round picks. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you'll get that. I don't that. think so either. But, but I, I have talked about that, and I, I would be with you there if you could get solid capital back for him. I don't think you'll, I don't think you'll get two first-round picks for him. I think there's I two think teams that you'll get solid capital. capital. I think there's two teams. One team Cowboys I think will give Eagles? us a first, and a couple of Tampa Bay needs a safety. They would give us the 14th pick. And two yeah, seconds Ted, for Ted Jamal Adams. Strapped for, yeah, but here's the problem with trading for Jamal Adams. He's going to want that huge contract. Tampa Bay can't afford that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Or the two 49ers. teams, I think you would probably – well, I don't know about the Niners, but the two – well, they, they have a safety that's pretty solid. But the two teams I think you'd probably have to target if you're going to make that trade, is one is Dallas and the other – I don't know where Philadelphia is with their capital, they don't but have I know money. that they were – yeah, I, I – because I know that they spent quite a bit, but before they spent all this money, they were definitely in the market for secondary help, particularly in that, in that safety spot, too, that they were sniffing around. But I think the Cowboys would still be a target there. But, again, I don't think yeah, you can get they can't even get that. You, they have to get Dak signed first so they can get Jamal signed. They, can't, they spent that money they on Mark Cooper. They, they got, yeah, they got they all do. kinds of cap problems there. If you wanted to trade Jamal, so, you should have did it like two weeks ago before free agency started yeah. so he could use that money elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, but but, but, but saying, gotta, Sam Darnold is up, out of the man, question. So. Yeah. Thank you for Don't calling me wrong. I love it. Sam Darnold. No, no problem, Dude. guys. Thank you. See, have a good night, Joe. Trading Sam Darnold to the Dolphins? Could you about? I, I was just like, what? Like what? I would. I would good lord. I would, I would be, that would be the end of me. That would. That would be the end of me. That would be the officially the day. I just. I. I, I would actually just call you, Joe. It's over. It means over. It's over. Like, everything's done. Like I'm just done. Like it's over. Like it's over. I'm done. This has finally broke me. I'm done. That would be it. Everything's done. I quit. Oh. That would be finally. Oh, I don't know. Sam Darnold to the Dolphins. That, 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 yeah, that would that would be horrific. Trading him in the first off, trading him to begin with <laughs> at this point sounds ridiculous. Like that that's not something I will even be interested in. But trading him in division. To a team that is, I mean, in desperate need Lord of a franchise mercy. quarterback and with a ton of draft picks and cap, more capital coming up. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, <laughs> just even thinking about him in that uniform makes me want to throw up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, As we wrap God. things up, first thing I want to do is want to thank all the great callers. At Talk Jets Radio on Instagram and Twitter. Let's Talk Jets, Let's Talk Jets Radio on YouTube. Um, and, Joe, it is your time to shine. Yes, absolutely. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page. Our content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. I'm also on Twitter as well at YoungJ000. That's three zeros. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You know, troll me. No issues. I am the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will troll you right back. I'm also on YouTube as well. Um, at YoungJ00. That's two zeros on YouTube, three on Twitter. I do videos. I continue to do them. I continue to talk about the Jets, talk about our, our free agent uh, acquisitions and all the things that we're doing. So go ahead and subscribe to my content on there as well. You want to troll me on there as well. No issues. I will troll you right back. And as always, people, when you see me in person, okay, it is arms out. Come on, man.
<laughs> Come on, man. We got people calling in, you know what I'm saying, sipping a little bit of that juice, stay moving and grooving. You hating on that? Like, come on, man. You got to stop that. You got to stop that. You got people saying they want to trade Sam to the Dolphins. Like, come on, man. Tonight is not the night, all right? Not the night tonight, okay? So, listen, when you folks see me in person, it is arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone. Don't listen to the hater that is Roush. I want to thank you folks for listening. Without you people, we are absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the time out of your day for li- to listen and call into the show. You folks are the best. Be safe, practice social distancing, and we will talk to you guys next Tuesday. <laughs>